Hello, welcome to Friday on the AM Show. Here we go, Bernice Benjamin and this tag team, this collab to serve you a fantastic breakfast this morning on television. We call this the AM Show, and we're glad to have you as always. Well, here's what we have planned for you this morning. Right after the news, I'll be joined by Samuel Mbura. He's a member of the Joy News Political Desk. He'll be joining me as we slice and dice the newspapers. But then again, it's Friday and we've got Prime Take with Muftao Nabila Abdullahi and uh, we'll be serving you the latest on that on the show. And of course, we'll also bring you the news review even before that. Now later, I'll be sharing with you my blunt thoughts for today. I'll let you know in the course of the news review what the title I've given it is. And then we get into our big stories. Today, we continue our conversation on how the Akosombo Dam spillage is affecting residents living along the Volta River. We'll be hearing from some stakeholders who are working to alleviate the plight of these people. There are also some demonstrations uh, taking place this morning. And guess what? Some residents of Kaswa are protesting traffic causing bad roads right after the toll booth. Uh, we'll be taking our cameras there today to get a picture of what exactly is happening and what the way forward is. Now, beyond all of those, beyond the Akosombo Dam, beyond Kaswa and the terrible roads, the National Union of Ghana Students is also on a campaign seeking hashtag justice for Africa. We'll be finding out why they've chosen that hashtag and what they imply by that. Also on the show today, we'll have a few drive-bys. We've got a couple of other conversations for you. Academic City, for example, is sponsoring our coverage of the National Science and Math Quiz. We'll be having an interaction uh, with them. Again... Family Health Medical School, another sponsor, will join us for breakfast. That's what the show looks like, so just stick and stay. We'll be back with the news shortly. Let's head for the news now, and in our first story, the tests conducted on 10 major rivers across the country have revealed high levels of dangerous heavy metals. The Oda, and Cobra, Tano, Ofin, and six others presented dangerous levels of lead, arsenic, chromium, and cadmium. Almost all major rivers and streams across the country are highly polluted by irresponsible mining. Irasta Sasaridonko has excerpts in his latest documentary, Poisoned for Gold. The milky brown color of the rivers and streams flowing across the country indicate suspended particles, including poisonous heavy metals. Two years ago, residents of Ewusiejo in the Ahanta West district of the Western region were drinking the polluted water, but soon, they started experiencing strange afflictions, as recounted by Theodora Yamwa, a nurse in charge of the town's chips compound. Some of them came here with frequent urinating and also burning sensation when they are urinating. And also some came with skin rashes. We fetched samples from the tunnel, Brim, Butri, Ofing, Anuru, and cobra, pra, and other polluted sources of water to be tested for heavy metals at the sheath laboratory of the KNUST's chemistry department. After a week of testing, the results were in. For standard sick, we use the World Health Organization standards. The World Health Organization pegs the acceptable standard for arsenic at 0.0050 milligrams per liter, while the US and Ghana pegs it at 0.010 milligram per liter. The Oda, Brim, Pra, Ankobra, Enru, Ofin, Ashri, Butri, Subri, and Tano registered between 0.216 and 0.444 milligrams per liter, which is 0.434 milligrams higher than acceptable levels. This is 20.6 
to 55.6% higher than acceptable levels in water using the American and Ghanaian standards. Dr. Eugene Ansa explains the test results. All these water samples that are coming from our water bodies in Ghana were found to be acidic in nature, that is having a pH less than 7. It means that it has got a corrosive effect and whenever you drink it you have irritations in the truth. Drinking waters are expected to be neutral. In terms of toxic metals, lead was ranked as the highest toxic metal present in all these water samples. And should anybody drink this water or even swim in these waters, then they are exposed to high levels of lead. The other metals include chromium, cadmium, and arsenic, and all these samples could not pass the quality standards. Now with our next story, Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali has reiterated government's commitment to ensuring that terrorists and their elements are warded off from the country. He explains the government is aware of their threats and has initiated the Gulf of Guinea Social Cohesion Project in order to economically liberate the people from the trappings of these terrorist groups. Rafiq Salam reports from Wa. The Gulf of Guinea Northern Region Social Cohesion Soko Project seeks to contribute to the prevention of conflict spillover from the Sahelian countries by improving the social and economic resilience of the targeted northern region and strengthening regional dialogue across the Gulf of Guinea countries. The project is being funded by the World Bank with an amount of 450 million United States dollars and implemented in four countries, namely Ghana, Ivory Coast, Togo, and Benin. Ghana will receive 150 million US dollars out of the total amount earmarked for the project. 48 municipalities and districts in the northern Gulf of the country are benefiting from the project. In the Upper West region, all 11 municipalities and districts have been enrolled into the project. Our Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, at a short ceremony, to hand over 52 motorbikes, 15 laptops, and five pickups to five MDAs, Soko Zonal Office, and the Upper West Regional Coordinating Council noted that the Soko project is a game changer, pledging the support of the Upper West RCC to make it successful. It will liberate our people economically so that they are not entrapped to go to be attracted to do things that will go against the sovereignty of our nation. As you may be aware, terrorists are knocking on our doors and if people, young people are there and they don't have anything to do, then they can be lured to do things that will go against their communities and indeed the entire country. Soko Zonal Coordinator for the Upper West and Savannah Regions, David Yenki, disclosed that the various beneficiary districts have so far awarded six or seven projects and it's hopeful that work will begin before the end of the month. Right now, uh, the 11 districts in Upper West Region have outlined and have started awarding 67 sub-projects. And these 67 sub-projects are supposed to be um, started latest by close of this month. There are no contractors have received their award letters. And so these equipment and vehicles that we have seen here are actually going to facilitate implementation and monitoring of this sub-project so that we ensure that those critical infrastructure that we are seeing, we want to uh, the, the community people to get will be delivered according to the prescriptions and prescriptions of the World Bank and the Ministry. Though the project is yet to fully start, one municipal chief executive, Alaji Sakutai Moment, on behalf of colleague MDCEs, is hopeful that the project will achieve its intended purpose. 
all the intended projects under this SOKO are all tailored towards the needs of the people because need assessments were made from the communities and from the people and they told us exactly what they want in their communities and that is exactly what we are doing. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wa. Now, to promote proper hand washing among school going children, the Techiman Municipal School Health Education uh, Program Unit of the Ghana Education Service has, together with the Ghana Health Services, held an educational program with some selected schools in the Sansama community. The SHEP coordinator, Mary Wuntima, says this will create awareness of the benefits of hand washing and raise the students' ability and confidence in washing hands at school, which would ultimately minimize infections among children. And Asabit has more. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic necessitated unprecedented, significant, and sustained infection prevention and control measures to reduce the risk of exposure and prevent transmission. Aggressive hand washing with soap and the running water was among the various prevention protocols adapted to mitigate the spread of the pandemic. This hand washing protocol, health experts say, reduces the transmission of microorganisms, increases patient safety, and decreases healthcare associated infections. Sadly, however, rigorous hand washing, as seen in the era of the COVID 19 pandemic, is slowly fading away. Situation that exposes many to several health risks. Techima Municipal School Health Education Program Coordinator Mary Wuntuma, who, as part of the Global Hand Washing Day, instituting measures capable of sensitizing school children within the Sansama community on the need to adopt hand washing with soap and the running water as a way of life. After COVID, it looks as if we have reduced the hand washing. And you agree with me, when COVID came, a lot of diseases especially diarrhea in Ghana, Corilla, you, you never heard of it. And it was just because of proper hand washing. That is why we, asked, we decided to come to San Sama, so that we'll educate the children how to wash their hands properly. And as they go back and their parents will, who will come from the farm, they will also then give them the information of how to wash their hands properly and all the time. She was quick to have admonished corporate institutions to reintroduce Veronica packets at their premises and make hand washing part of their respective protocols. So I think that in our banks and other uh, institutions, we should be able to bring back Veronica packets. So let's our uh, our. Uh, institutions should keep on encouraging people to wash their hands by providing soap, water, and then uh, tissue for all customers who come around to wash their hands. So we we'll all live healthy. Chief of the area, Nana Afna Yeboa, who acted as the chairman of the occasion, promised to serve as an ambassador for hand washing and is hopeful that the act, if adopted, will help minimize infections across the area. We are going to campaign, in fact from here, we are going to the Paris to campaign to the people, to the communities. A young festival, a poor festival, whatever it is, we are now going to inculcate it into our system so that wherever we meet, people will know the essence of washing hands or cleaning hands. So when that is done, definitely we are going to reduce disease and germs in our society. So we are going to do that. We will make sure that that is done in our various Paris and world so that people will adopt that. Assemblyman for Sansama Electoral Area, Nuhu Abdurazak, also emphasized that the move fits into his sanitation project and noted that enough education will be carried out to help sensitize the populace. Being a stakeholder of this uh, community, I'm going to take it right away from you. Already I started doing something and this one to us also come to join. That means it is going to be a process, not an event. And that is to say that right from here, any occasion where I will have the chance, I will be educating the people the continuous uh, way of washing hands before eating. And that is why, you know, if you want to speak to God, you speak to the children. We've just started with the children. This year's Global Hand Washing Day was marked under the theme, Clean Hands Are Within Reach. And as a bit, Joy News. Now, in our final story, on five consecutive occasions, the Presbyterian Boys 
SHS has reached to the finals of the National Science and Math Quiz. They beat Infantipim School and Keta SHS in a heated battle of intellect. Jacqueline and Sumayabwa caught up with the schools after the contest contest with the seven-time champion that is Presec Legon um, leading with some 44 points. But um, let me move to, um, we have Keta Senior High School. They were very optimistic right now. Keta, now how, how are you feeling right now, knowing that you put up quite an impressive performance today? Okay, for us, God has taken us very far when we even least expected it. So all what we want to say is we thank God for taking us this far. And it is what it is. Next, next year we are coming back stronger and we are thanking God for how far he has made this contest. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. What about you? Oh, okay. I hope you are, you are not down. You are you're okay no, no, with your no, 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 no. I am not. I am not at all because you could see that the contest was a beautiful one. Yeah, these are big schools coming together. Even though uh, it didn't end how we expected and all, but we are, we, are, we are very proud of our guys. They did very well. You also you could see 89, 89, 89. So what, what should we expect from Keta next year? We are coming for the trophy. See, when we, be, when we began, we left it in the hands of God. And next year, too, everything is still in the hands of God. So and we are coming for the trophy. No problem. That's the promise. Yes, we are yeah, that's the promise. We are coming strong next year. We are coming strong next year. Don't worry. So that is um, students, all students and students from Keta Senior High School. But I am here with um, the winners themselves, that is Presec Legon, and they won this contest with some um, 44 points. Um, I believe you are a trainer, you are part of the trainers. How are you feeling right now? Big relief, a very big relief. You know, if Fancy Pim nearly gave you a run for your money, I realized you were all praying. H how were you feeling at that moment? Me, at that moment, when Pim was leading? At that moment where... I was praying. I just felt this sense of peace around me. And then, like, I just had to keep praying because I didn't want to... I mean, anything I'm talking could have happened. And then we trusted God that God is going to give us this victory. So I have to... So I just had to still keep my trust in me and not lose my faith. Even though things were not going as planned. So I just like to thank God for everything. I just like to thank God for everything. I mean, it's a very big relief. I mean, being in the finals, five consecutive times, it's a big relief. And I like to thank God for everything. Thank you. Moving forward, we are just a step away to the finale. What should we expect from your boys? <laughs> Nothing but the best from God. So you are an old student, right? How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling so happy. I'm so happy. This gives me nostalgia. It's like last year's finals. I mean, at the start, we knew that Infant Prim would give us a good contest. And I was saying kudos to them. They actually gave us a good contest. But we proved to them that we are the reigning champions. Very tight at a point. We realized that if Fancy Pim was leading, personally, I thought today wouldn't be your day. But then you guys pulled through. At that point, when the scores were close, how were you feeling then? Honestly, were you scared? Honestly, honestly, I was very scared. I was very scared. But we know that this year our mantra is our God is great. So we we're clinging on to that mantra, and at the end of everything, God proved Himself worthy for us. Yes. So we are very happy. Yeah. Okay, so these two gentlemen, I spoke to them earlier. How are you feeling right now? Hmm, I can't you are sweating. I'm sweating. It's the love of Prisek. You know, we always believe in God to deliver for us. I told you earlier in the interview that it's not by our might, it's not by our power, it's not by our intelligence, but by the grace of God that helped us to win. And that is what you have done. Yeah. Well, you, are, you are meeting Achimota. You are meeting Owas. What should we expect from you? Are we clinging onto the trophy this time around? You see, there's an agenda ongoing that every young man and woman should learn. Presec, we've always said that we trust in God. And when you trust in God, this is the kind of results you are going to see. And so we are telling every young man, every woman, young woman out there that, look, just put your trust in God. Put in the hard work. Be diligent. And then excellence will be calm. Excellence will be your portion. At Chimota and Opokuwari, we are going back to do our homework. We are going back to work hard because it's not over. We are taking the eighth trophy. Eight is written. And we believe in a great God. And we know that our God is faithful. And so we are taking the eighth trophy. So we are going to do our hard work and we'll meet them at the National Theatre. Okay, all right. These are still students um, from Presec Legon. And just as I said, um, currently they are.
the um, school with the highest scoring point, 44 points in the semi-finals, um, with Achimota having some 41 points. Point. So they are still leading the semi-finals. Um, they led um, also in the quarter-finals, that is for um, Presec Legon. They are still leading the path. Um, the big question remains that which of these three schools um, would be winning this year? Well, thank you very much for staying with us. We're back on the AM show, serving you the news review. And guess who joins me? Samuel Mbura of our political desk. Man of many things, always on the beat, delivering stellar performances. You know how we do it, to ensure that you're always informed. Well, right before we get into the papers, this segment is always brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. They're offering you, if you're a man, Mephindiagro, your prostate. Check it out. When was the last time you got a screening? Mine was last year. I've been a bit recalcitrant, but I'll do it before the year ends. How about you? If you're a woman, do you know what your fertility status is? We take things for granted. We're eating different kinds of stuff. We don't know what is going on there. I mean, it's like breast cancer month. You want to check out your breasts for any lumps and stuff like that. How about your fertility? Do you know? That is why I am encouraging you this morning to go to Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. What are they offering? Free prostate screening, free female fertility screening. All you need to do is locate them at any of their branches. Here in Accra, they are at Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard. In Kumase, Kronomabwe here, behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Anaji State, Temma, Community 22, Techiman Hanswe and Siaman Zama. Their call lines, 0244-867-0244. 0274-234-321. End point homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic disease. But while we proffer for you the good things, and here, look at the mechanisms we go through, so many of them to ensure that any product we're talking about here has gone through the FDA checks and everything in between. It's a properly registered business and all of that. There are some nefarious characters on social media using my face, the faces of other prominent broadcast journalists for very negative things. Uh, just this morning, right before I came back into the studio, a certain bishop accosted me again and said, oh, I've seen talk of this medicine for hypertension, diabetes, and all of that. Is that from you guys? I've had so many people, prominent, uh, whatever, reach out to me talking about this. So I want to put this out there. This is the official statement we've put out, apart from calling on Facebook to take this down. And as you can see, scam alert, the attention of Joy News has been drawn to fake infomercials circulating on social media that bear its logo. These infomercials use deep fake technology, you can read about that, to mimic the voices of some of our presenters and anchors and make various claims about the efficacy of certain medicines. Joy News has been reporting each of such misrepresentations to Facebook for the necessary actions to be taken. We wish to inform our valued audience that these infomercials are not from our platforms and should be disregarded. Thank you. So please, you see something and they are promising with a please check, double check, triple check, quadruple check, quintuple check if you'd like, because you're going to put something into your system. Look, Samuel Mbura, let me come into the studio. Uh, these people may not even send you anything when you pay, when you make a payment, you get it. These are fraudsters. They may not even send you anything. Or they may end up sending you something that could actually be poisonous. So, please, let's all stay safe. So they're, they're looking there. for people with integrity to yes. champion their, their agenda. And that's yes. why the likes of you and some of our colleagues have been used in that AI mimicking, I mean, video just to um, confuse or convince people that, look, we have endorsed it or it's coming from joining. So, yeah. like... Ben is saying you have to do all the necessary checks. If in doubt, just cross-check, double-check, and do the right thing before you go and consume anything that is dangerous to yourself and end up blaming others for it. So I think the disclaimer has put everything to rest, and people will be on the lookout in social media. Hopefully, because some people 
I may, may not have seen this, some people may, but hopefully we'll all spread the word to our, our neighbors, brothers and sisters. But this isn't the first. The yeah. first I remember was this financial product. Yeah. Again, fraud. Yeah. Kind of like the fraud says who will call you. Yeah. Investment scams. Yeah. And they were using uh, uh, images as well. The world is, you see, while AI and deep fake, I mean, AI, let's restrict the it AI, AI tools and the are, are good and all of that, there's also always the negative side. And these are some of them popping up. Anyway, so it's, it's been an interesting week, Samuel Mbura. Exactly. So many things from the Akosombo Dam spillage, which is still continuing. And that simply breaks my heart. It breaks very, my heart. Very, very to the comments of the president, to oh. <laughs> the OSB <laughs> and Cecilia Dapa, to everything else that has happened in between. I don't know. Is there anything? I mean, my, 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 my main concern for the week has to do with the Akosombo spillage. And I've been wondering, didn't we anticipate this? It is not only in the Volta region. You see, communities along the Volta Basin are, are affected. Those in the Pro East, you know, from the Makango area and all, are also, I mean, affected. Our concentration now is in the Volta region because houses or communities have submerged. But if you look at the wider picture, it is more or less a nationwide wreckage of this, this flood. And I've been reading a lot about it, and some of us who are so much concerned about the environment, I mean, should be concerned about this whole situation. What are some of the emergency or the contingency measures I've always put in place by VRA, the stakeholders who are involved? Now, I understand they are going to do some simulation exercise. That's what VRA says. Is it the case that they have not been given regular alerts? Let me just use Sonabel, for example. Sonabel is the operators of the Bagri Dandi in Burkina Faso. Yeah. Anytime they are going to spill the dam, they give alerts, like a month for preparedness. They alert the Ghanaian authorities, the security agencies, then they'll start sensitizing the people that this is what we're going to do. Those living along the lowlands should go to the highlands, uh, don't go to farms, and then prepare to evacuate and all that. Has that been the case in the uh, spillage of the Akusombo Dam? These are some of the questions we need to answer. Uh, what are the long-term measures to keep this issue of flooding and affecting people around these areas? Is it the case that we are not collaborating with the international communities? Togo and Burkina Faso are there. Our water bodies run into this. So what is the international... And, and we, are polluting, we are polluting exactly. the Ivorians, for example, exactly. what is have our, had cause to What is know, our transboundary agenda or collaboration with the Ivorians or the um, Cote d'Ivoire and then Togo? Right. Or Burkina Faso, so that at least this spilled water can also spill into the, I mean, move to the other side, and then they can use it for other beneficial purposes, other than wasting the water away. Look, the environmental factors are also there. The wetland areas, what are the infrastructures we are putting in place to improve it? Now, we know that most of our trees have been cut down, and then a whole lot of devastation mm. and all that. And this is a clear <clears throat> indication that, look, if you don't protect the environment, one day the water will come and consume us. It will come and consume us, and that is nature paying us back. Just like we are seeing... I mean, what you our... put into nature is what it will exactly. give back to you. What are we doing to dredge... <laughs> like the... our bodies. Exactly. Our bodies are emulating... What, what, are we doing to dredge, what are we doing to dredge the tributaries, I mean, other uh, connections to the dam? So at least it will ease this pressure. Are, are they telling us that there was no any way they could have redirected this water or there was no any contingency plan that, okay, in case our reservoirs are overflowing or it reaches a point whereby our reservoirs cannot contain the water, we spill the water. This is the direction that it will take. Going downstream, the impact will not be huge as we are still seeing now. Now all manner of funds have been put together to assuage the situation. The last time the Agri Minister said they are going to commit $40 million to mm. restore the farmlands <clears throat> in the Volta Basin, those from the Volta region, Eastern region, and to the Bono area. So, Instead of using these money for other national activities, we see how we are now running Helter Skelter to put in place all these measures. And I think watching the videos, I'm really devastated how people have lost their livelihoods, they've lost their homes. I can imagine the reflection if these people go back after these um, floods recede, whether they'll be able, able to go back home and sleep in peace. Look, some of the houses, in terms of engineering-wise, they are not safe for them. To stay, no, no to the, stay inside. The, the point is, the a lot of these of the houses yeah. now are death traps. Exactly. They, when the, when the waters they, recede, yeah. recede the, the structural integrity of these buildings exactly. would have been compromised. 
okay, for most of them, looking at even the soil it's type there, houses even looking submerged. at so houses right. submerged, yeah. I mean, it, it will be like waiting for disaster to yeah. happen. So it, it would almost be impossible for them to relocate. What do they do? What do they do now? now Where the, do they go? They are proposed that they send them to Saglemi Housing. Saglemi Housing. Projects. And, and we've also and, left that to, to, to rot. rot. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just imagining what we are going to do. Is it a normal talk? A reason I'm much concerned about this interministerial committee, like mm -hmm. what's their job? Ben, I'm confused. You are going to do fact check and make recommendation? Or what exactly are you going to do? No, you it? know, we are always oh. a reactionary people, a, a reactionary misleadership. We wait for things to happen and then we'll be running around like headless chickens, yeah. wondering what the next step is. Look at NADMO. Yeah. Let's start from NADMO. We woefully under-resource them. Yes, you can give NADMO its own bashing, yeah. but we woefully under-resource them. <laughs> How do you expect them to do anything when these things happen? Those are people's plots of land. Yeah. Those are developments that are started. Look, yeah. that, is someone's, that is someone's development yeah. there. Now, now this, this, it will not be fit for purpose in any way. You see some of those with thatch structures, yeah. mud structures those as well. As for those ones, they're already gone. Yeah. The road, road network there is completely destroyed. And, yeah. and even when the waters recede, recede, you'll be looking at um, health issues, the water, yeah. Yeah. stagnant for this long. They have to re-engineer the whole, the whole place. Look, re look at the, right look at the swathes of land. Yeah. Look at that. Look at even b buildings with High -rise some... Buildings. Exactly. Look yeah. at them. You know? It's, it's, it's really pathetic. I'm, I'm I suppose this is a school. Yeah. This that, looks that, like that, a school. That, that's a school. That's a school. So what, what it means is that the water in the area automatically is contaminated. We don't know how long exactly. it will take out to flush the debts yes. from the pipelines. Yes. So what is our plan? And, and then, you know, there are so many questions to ask because we know that these dam spillages yeah. will take place anyway. So why do we get like this? The other curious thing, which makes you wonder, the Akosumbo Dam, yeah. from time to time, runs dry. Yeah. Not dry as in there's and no water, water levels at all, go down. but the water levels go down. So we have no mechanism in place to store this water so that maybe when the water recedes at certain times of the year, you can flush in some water. We are saying we can't think around a solution like that. The engineers at VRA, government itself, and we have to wait till something like this happens. So after quite and then we go there and Mr. President will be talking about votes instead of commiserating. That, that's why I've been asking the question. So after Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, there's no precedent that thought beyond what Kwame Nkrumah did. To say, let me go downstream, construct maybe another reservoir there to store the water in case we are running dry, we can't get to. But Charlie, we have left it as it is after Kwame Nkrumah did this. That ended the story. Look, there are even some places where, you know, along the water lake, the stumps, yeah. the stumps, some of them have to be removed because they are a hazard yeah. to those who fish, those who ply that. I mean, we've had some incidents where if you look into them, some of these stumps, and you can't see them, and some go very deep and very high. You may not see them, but you get entangled in them and you are in a mess. All of those are there. They are also waiting disasters. We are going to sit down, fold our arms, let the disaster happen. happen. Then we'll, the talk shop, oh, and this and that. Do you remember those incidents where some of our children were drowning? Yeah while crossing to school, school in canoes and, and the rest. Yeah. Go to some of the places that we spoke well, about and, has and a bridge will be put up nothing and this changed. and life jackets yeah. go there today. We are waiting for another disaster and then the talk shop will start. Nothing has changed. It's actually a shame to see mm. this on our screens and I think that it is not only, I mean, we have to hold all those who are responsible accountable. If not, we'll continue to talk, we'll continue to report and the situation wouldn't change. I, I, I'm really sad about the situation. My heart goes out for the people along the Volta Basin, not just in the Volta region. This devastation is unimaginable. I can hey, imagine the I mean. flashbacks, the reflection after this water recedes. Whether if I go back to my community, I'll be able to sleep with my eyes closed. I mean, this, this is like any person's, yeah. one of probably the worst nightmares. Look at that. Look at that. So school has well, come to a halt in this area, no commercial activity. You're talking of school, everything. everything Life has, I mean, they are living, but right now it will basically be like subsisting because you're not really living out what your potential is. But let's get into the papers. And um, we highlight these issues because uh, it's someone today. It, will be, it could be you.
tomorrow. We have to this do actually, better. This is actually a national crisis. It's not only it's it's it's, 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 it's let's, a let's take note. It's a big it's a national issue. issue, and that's why some people are calling for a state of emergency. I uh, I think that we should look at that critically. I think it fits. It fits the bill. And everything. It fits the bill. I have the Daily Graphic and the Daily Statesman this morning. What do you have? I have Daily Guide and the Finder newspaper. Let's start from your end. All right, so uh, Daily Guide, uh, obviously we have the dam spillage. All stakeholders engaged in simulation exercises coming from VRA. We've already dealt with that. National Youth Authority boards held over youth resource centers. The big story on the Daily Guide, you know, the 2.37 million euro ambulance case. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The you mean former, the Cassie Alato Yeah, yeah. So, Seth Tekpe, the former finance minister, said, I gave Ato Forsen the go ahead. Oh. Uh, so, okay. that's what he's um, testifying uh, be, before. Uh, because, you know, there was a time when they wanted him to come and exactly, know, testify. testify. And all I think that. They, so, he's done that. Yeah, exactly. So, the former finance minister, um, Seth Tekpe, has said he personally authorized his um, then deputy, Dr. Keso Ato Forsen, to ask Bank of Ghana to set up letters of credit for Big C General Trading Limited of Dubai for the supply of 30 ambulances. So uh, Mr. Tequest, um, the star witness, is actually a star witness uh, for the defense team in the $2.73 million Euro ambulance case uh, brought against the minority leader and two others told an Accra High Court Economic and Financial Division that the request for the establishment of the letters of credit was made at a special management meeting he presided over at the finance ministry. So it was not a unilateral decision by the minority leader right. um, to uh, issue these uh, letters and all that. So that's what it... Th th this is an interesting yeah. twist yeah. because we've seen so many matters come to the fore. Yeah. I think even Alex Segbefia, yeah. the health minister at the time, was also roped in and this and that. But I guess that brings some perspective, yeah, perspective to what to happened. The direction of the uh, court here. So uh, the other big story to the political uh, center has to do with MPP, not tribalistic. It's coming from Dr. Mahmoud Baumi, vice president. He was in the Upper West region, specifically um, in Tumu. Mm. And then he tried to demystify this myth that the um, MPP is an account party. He gave a history of how the Northerners have always been part. You know, his father, um, the, the late um, Mumuni Baumi, played a critical role in forming the Northern People's Party. Yeah. And, I mean, um, he's using that one to accentuate the but, fact... But that, that in itself was very problematic because <laughs> that was why it, it brought to bear in our constitutional life yeah. talk about not founding parties or forming parties... Based on... Travel based on... Travel because that was a very, you know, it was a dangerous path to, exactly. to tread. So he had demystified that myth that the MPP is a tribalistic party and then he's urging the delegates that I mean he's obviously the right person to lead a party so you should give him the money he's not campaigning based on tribal lines okay it is the time for the Dumba no but the fact that he's but that has been said hasn't it <laughs> I mean it's time for the Dumba tradition <laughs> to do something <laughs> to, to anyway. do something okay so Katie Hammond floors Jackie Quaysen over a contempt case uh, it is in page six of the uh, daily guide and interesting the hero yeah uh, our man, the Trace Minister, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic man there. there. There's a related story from, from sports having to do with the Akosombo uh, spillage. Use AFCON budget to support Akosombo victims. You so, do you agree with that? AFCON? The, uh, AFCON budget to support... Ah, those who are saying that, look, we're spending... Look, yeah. th there's... Look there's, at the performance of the Black Stars. There's a serious... So let me look at two things. There's a serious conversation going on, apart from the Saglemi yeah. you know, proposal. Two key conversations going on in terms of COVID-19 money, yeah. for example. You can divert it to... Apart from the Ghana AIDS Commission, which is bleeding. I had their director here, Dr. Etia yeah. here yesterday. We can pump some of these funds. I mean, why are they even still charging us for COVID-19? Yeah. The levy. Yeah. What are they using the money That's for? Yeah. What is the money being used? We are done with COVID, right? The Ghana AIDS Commission, we are seeing an uptick in numbers. So many people are now going for the ARTs, the antiretroviral anti you know, treatments, drugs, and all of that. Why don't we channel them? And in this instance, why can't we channel part of it to give relief to the people? And, and again, look, I always say that sports must deliver. Yeah. Chris Hilton's job is now on the line since you brought in the, the soccer or the football. Mm -hmm. The Black Stars are woefully underperforming. I saw, I mean, their last performance was so underwhelming. Yeah, you Losing 2-0 to Mexico and then 4-0 to the U.S. We have a history with the United States. That was embarrassing. And uh, if it had I, been I know, a, but single, a single goal, that would have been pardonable. But four goals. Four goals. My old boy four an answered goal. <laughs> my old boy called to tell me that he, he spent the whole night waiting to watch the match. You know, it was around 12 a.m. 
Then when he they scored us two goals, it was like, ah. So these players, meaning there was no single person taken all the way from Ghana to play. So the spirit of the Black Stars wasn't behind their reason. That is his deduction. A reason they lost. Ah. Hopefully like that. And he was so angry about the whole situation. But, but, but I think, honestly. We are really not doing well. It's high time we had a conversation as a people on our investments in, sports. into sports and what we get out of it. Yeah. Boxing, for example, for decades, from the days of DK Poison to Azuma yeah. Nelson to Ike Bazooka Quarte to yeah. all of these, the Clotes and the uh, Dogbeys and all of that, it has served us so well. But sometimes you get into boxing and you look at the commitment, the levels of commitment. The last time, this gentleman who won a medal in the last Olympics, the bronze medal, okay. and received promises from the president about $20,000 scholarship and all of that. Recently, he said he wouldn't join the team because those promises had not been fulfilled. Oh. I've, had, I've heard of sprinters. You remember, is it Ignatius Geza or is it Gezi? And then there was another lady, I think a, a jumper, one of those triple Yeah, the lesser known sports and activities, they've not actually given Some of these people will even tell you that when they get injuries, yeah. the only thing they'll get from our sporting people is... Oh, oh, be well, and, and, and maybe we'll do something, and they never do Some it. Some motivation and inspirational speeches. They never do it. Someone tears the Achilles or something, or, or some other, and you don't want them to, you, you don't do anything for them. Yeah. But you expect that when they are fit, they'll come and serve the country. That was what happened to some of our so athletes. Sad. We're not pumping money into them. We're pumping so much into football. It's okay. Yeah. Football is the, it's like the fix. I remember being in Cuba and, you know, people were telling me about Michael Essien and Asamwajan and stuff like that. It's good. That is soft power at play. But if you are not getting it right, you either shape up or ship out. Exactly. Let's, let's pump money into other things that will bring us. Look at the, and, and let me just end. We have been so unfair to our female teams, teams. and players. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Hazakes ladies also, they went to the AFCON thing. First time, they placed second among all the teams. CAF decided not to give them the way anything. The said, I feel our government, the sports ministry, could have done something, yeah. given them something. We don't motivate. And the women, our over the last how many team, yeah. years, 10 years, yeah. have been the ones winning laurels for, for, laurels for us. Yeah. Maybe you take out the 20, whatever. And, and even that is 2010. So it's still out, outside of the 10 years. Yeah. So the last story from me on the center spread, uh, spread of the Daily Guide has to do with one man who has been warming our screens, Mr. Ibo. He's facing oh. possible leg amputation and he's begging for support. Such a sad incident. I watched oh, it. Wow. Videos. He's begging for support. Yeah. Financial support? Financial support. Because we know he's, he's yeah, pretty yeah. well to that, do. That's the situation on the, on, the, on the grounds now. So uh, in, a, in a viral video on social media, he pleaded for support uh, from his uh, fans uh, because his situation is getting worse by day. I know the Nigerian hmm. Actors Guild is also right. contributing. In oh, the video God bless their hearts. Uh, we, well, what we can say is that may his creator heal him. Yeah. And we wish him the very yeah, best. Yeah. You, you, from time to time, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big fan of some of the local industries when it comes to, because I see too much on negative things, witchcraft and, uh, and plots that you can see the end of from end the of beginning. Exactly. I, I don't like such. But I these guys, you know, these the, guys the, are... The been... latest movies, you can easily tell what comes. What exactly. Comes. But, you know, in their days, I mean, you would be stuck to your... These guys have, have held it down when it comes to comedy. Yeah. Just yesterday, I was watching something from Dave Chappelle the black American, you know, bit. But these people on, on our continent have held it down the same way exactly. the Ejakos and the Lil Wayne's and, uh, and the Mr. Beautifuls and others oh, have, yeah. have done it uh, here. Well, we pray for the very best. Yeah, sure, sure. Let's yeah. look at the Daily Graphic uh, quickly and then uh, we'll get to other stories. Maximizing agri benefits. President charges youth to form cooperatives and then, uh, well, cooperatives on what land and what areas. Now with everything practically polluted the land galamse has taken over, taken over yeah you know i read a story this morning for the news and do you know that gradually we are unwittingly poisoning ourselves yeah. because the leafy veggies you're getting from different parts of the country all the products the food you are putting in fish, you and I over eat. time yeah. the fish yeah. so someone has restricted himself to the muscles because Not the, eating head, the head of the fish the bones yeah. and yeah. other parts I have a I've friend who likes it. eating the fish head. They, they slap your yeah. <laughs> I hope he's advised. Hopefully that. it's from yeah. fish farms and, yeah. not, and not maybe from natural sources. Yeah. Arsenic, chromium, cadmium, mercury, lead, among a host of... And imagine, 
eating food over years with these and the concentrations in your body. I, I shudder to say if there were some way of testing every Ghanaian today to find out what the levels of these things are in us. Yeah. I'm sure many people will see many, that and the I, levels are higher I than I think the health ministry consistent. will have to take up that initiative to find out, especially the, the mining areas. And we can pilot um, it extensively at the mining areas, then we'll trim it down or send it. But if, if that is the, the case in, the in 10 of our water bodies, yeah. in 10 of them, and the people of those communities use the water bodies, you don't need to be a rocket. But yeah, we can, we can just sample those out. communities for th that mm. research. Then we can come out with a, an, a, I mean, a general outlook on how we can deal with it. Because these chemicals gradually migrate to destroy your yes. nervous system, your, your brain. We've been talking about dialysis yeah. prices. Guess what they do to your kidneys? Yeah. Guess what they do? Yeah. So we're going to have a lot more people succumbing to kidney, liver-related issues because your body can't process. The, they are not meant to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. So you sit in Accra and think, oh, oh. that's a, a, a problem for some parts of... It. it is coming to you. In fact, it is with you. And there is um, in Kuranza South, food basket and tapped tourism potential. Every day and tapped. When will tap? Only God knows. Lithium mining gets green light. Atlantic Lithium receives first lease. And me, I am just watching this from afar. So they have 15 with... years to, to, hmm. to mine this lithium. I, I, I'm, I'm still digging into the percentage that we're coming into the, the cafes of, of government and what these communities will benefit. I'm someone who advocates that communities that we find these natural I mean, resources should be properly equipped. They should be empowered so that you don't go and just take the, um, the resources there and later leave them in profit. We've seen them in mining communities. Go to the Takwa, go to the see how deplorable their road network is. Go hmm. to the mining communities, uh, go up north, whether upper west, upper east, the mining communities have been deprived, yet we are getting so much from these areas. So at least when you are drafting all these agreements, what percentage goes not to the chiefs alone? We know they have some royalties to pick. But what goes into the ordinary Ghanaian staying there? What are they, aside the fact that you give them immediate employment, we are looking at sustainable uh, livelihood empowerment projects, right. policies that they were embark on. So what is this particular company bringing on board, aside the fact that the percentage government is getting from the lithium is this, but look at the ordinary people there. Look, the even these percentages, I'll, I'll bring the full details of the story. These, these so percentages think, yeah. are nothing to write home about. Other African countries are doing a lot more, yeah. and some have even said, if you will not give us this, stay in your country, country. and let the resources stay in, stay our, there. in our land. Maybe in future, 10 years <laughs> you know, to come, they will have, we have leaders who have the foresight, who have that clever answer. This right. is what we can do in future right. to help the people. No, if you know that you cannot help the people now, don't rush to sign those deals. Allow someone oh, yes, who but they'll run, the they'll run to sign them because I mean, you know that. that. <laughs> eh, I mean, you know, you know what it is, you know what time it is. Yeah, anyway. Um, so in that story, after six years of exploratory activity, all is set for the mining of lithium to start in commercial quantities with improved terms, so called improved, <laughs> improved terms. terms. And uh, for the country, this follows the granting of the first ever mining lease for lithium to Bawari DV Ghana Limited, a subsidiary of Australia-based Atlantic Lithium. The $250 million project located at Ewoya in the Mfantiman uh, municipality, I know I murdered that name, mm -hmm. uh, is expected to commence production by 2025. And uh, the minister explained, that is the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, explained that per the mining lease, which was in line with the country's green minerals policy, Ayo, there had been an increase in royalties rate from the standard 5% to 10%. And this is what we are leaping about. When some about, countries yeah. are doing up to about 50%, 40%. And we'll be smiling. Oh, <laughs> yeah. we've got 10%. Our, we've got our, our thing done. <laughs> we've done our thing again. Oh. Oh. So sorry. Then I am, Mobo. So, so sorry. Yeah, Mobo. sorry. Yeah. Anyway, Accra Lions out to devour RTU. Which, which local team do you support? Um, I, I, you know, I've always been supporting Kotoko. And, uh, oh, not Real Tamale United or any yeah, of yeah, those? You know, I, uh, the, the reason is simple, because I spent much of my time in the Oh, okay. okay. You know, I used to go with uh, my brother to the stadium. Those days that there was, there was live um, in football, local, local, local matches. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a crowd has to focus playing Kotoko. Those in magazine area will leave their jobs on Saturday Charlie, 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 Charlie. from the stadium. And, and if then they lose, you don't even get tickets to buy. We'll and buy it and if advance. they lose, there'll be a lot of loss oh. when it comes to food buying because all the food will go <laughs> so, away. So, so <laughs> that's <laughs> where the love for Asante Kotoko and then, you know, they, they, they had that, they had, they carried that communal spirit. I'm so sad yeah. that 
It is gradually dwindling. It is dwindling. But Charlie, you've chosen a good team. <laughs> you've chosen a good team. Please, let's shake hands on <laughs> sure. Kumasi Asante Kotoko. <laughs> sure, sure. Everything red. Yeah. From my you to Kumasi Asante mm. Kotoko to Common World Hall. Uh, let's see how it will go. <laughs> <laughs> In your final paper. Yeah, okay, so the, the final government moves to tackle dialysis cost upon chroma. Mm. You know, the original distribution of dialysis machines or these um, machines for dialysis is actually a, it's in a pathetic situation. Mm -hmm. In my own region, last time I had to take the media to advocate. You had to take officials from the regional hospital to advocate and understand they have been able to procure some. Easy calls for framework to regulate social media use during the election. And then the issue about Akosombo, Pung, dams, pillage, impact farmers, livelihood companies, and then, and then the lease for the mining of lithium is also uh, captured there. So these are the stories making headlines on the finder. When it comes to the Daily Statesman, Ghana Seal's first lithium deal with enhanced royalties, increased state participation. There is uh, Veep sympathizers with flood victims. Social media degrading good governance ideals. Foreign minister says so. But I'll just do this one and it's a wrap. Government initiates action on kidney disease treatment. I've already mentioned it. Let me reiterate. The government has commenced discussions with key stakeholders within the healthcare sector to address the critical issue of dialysis costs for renal patients. You know, if it weren't for Joy News with that lady at the demonstration yeah. highlighting this, we wouldn't be talking about yeah. all of this. So again, knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. Wait till the problem. In fact, if we hadn't even blown up the bit about Kolibu and the charges, I'm sure it would have gone you know under the radar and god knows how many people would suffer but the dialogues aim to explore effective measures to alleviate the financial burden on patients in need of dialysis yes, yeah. uh, before i take your final words i saw elisha benin uh, you say you are watching us live uh, elisha thank you for watching and god richly bless you so guess what uh, samuel this morning do you want to know the title of my blunt thoughts I would like to know that. Okay. Incompetence and disrespect. How Ghana's misleadership rubs it in. Incompetence and disrespect. How Ghana's misleadership rubs it in. I'll be talking about the president's comments. Before that, it is good. I mean, it is pardonable if you are incompetent. Mm. However, it is unpardonable. To be incompetent and disrespectful. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. So if you are incompetent, we know that fine, you are incompetent. Right. But to extend it to disrespect... We can't accept that. We can't accept that. I'll talk about the president's uh, statements vis-a-vis -vis his oath of office and, and what it says. We'll talk about the de latest de uh, debt restructuring yeah. and where that leaves us. And then I have something, a video I'm going to be sharing with all of you from President Hishilema of Zambia. Okay. And some things he has said vis-a-vis -vis what we do. I'll not let you know exactly what. Stay for it uh, later. But Sam, any final words? Um, I'm in for Infansipim. You know, precise the media. Okay. You know, the media went through yesterday, and then I think that, I mean, why, why? Is it for only one school? They've been Is the to the finals on five consecutive oh. occasions. And, and, and I saw the skit yesterday where some Legon boys, you know, the Presec Legon boys go yeah. like, oh, Presec says it serves a living God. Uh, and that living God, or that day. Or that In other words, <laughs> does he sleep, but it fits the... the I would want my son know, to attend Presec. I would want my son to attend Presec in the future, though. Oh, really? I am in for him for, 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 this, for this competition. So it's the going to time, be Presec, Legon, yeah. Achimota. Yeah. I, I was rooting for St. Louis. It didn't happen. And then uh, there's Presec, Legon. So I, I, I'm, I'm all in for Infansipim. I think Presec, you should give way for other schools, too. So at least... At least... Get some glory. Uh, but they will not just give way. You must, yeah. you must earn it. <laughs> so we'll see. I can imagine the reaction from Papani and then uh, George. Oh, there's George Opokuwari. Yeah. There's Opokuwari. Yeah. There's Achimota. Yeah. And so there are four schools. There's, there's Presec. Okay. Yeah. So, no, it's, it's just these three. Three schools. Okay. Yeah. Because I think Presec was in the same group with um, uh, Keta SHTS. And then Opokuwari. And then um, no. Yeah, yesterday, okay, yeah, we can. Uh, Opoku I think it was in front of him, brother. Okay, so Opokuwari won against, uh, what do you call it, uh, Prempe and then um, Keta, right? Uh, oh, it was that, rather uh, Opokuwari, I think okay. so. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. So they won there. So now we have those schools getting into the finals. And you say you are rooting for? In front of him. Okay. Well, in front of him is out all. It's out? Really? Because it's Owas, I Achimota, I and Presec. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't follow that game. Owas, I see. Achimota, 
And then that's rather unfortunate. Then if uh, so, the team then, are rooting then, for it. Then, then, then if in fact the payment is out, then I'd rather go for was because of the Kumasi route. Okay. Yeah, I will go for was. Hey. <laughs> you are being very rude centered this morning. Anyway, thank you so much for yeah. joining the conversation. I'm grateful, my brother. I'm grateful. So we wrap the conversation with not fake news, mm. nothing AI, yeah. and Point Homeopathic Clinic, guaranteed. We've checked them out, and they're offering you free prostate screening, free female fertility screening. Well, just check them out at any of their branches. You can locate them here in Accra, it's Pentex, opposite the Shell Sign Board, Kumasi, Krono here, behind the Angel Educational Complex. In Takrade, they can be located at the Anaji Estates in Tema, Community 22, Techi Manhanswa, and Esiama in Zama. Pick up your phone. Save these numbers. Give them a call later in the day. 0244 867 or 0274-234-321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. And um, we're heading into sports now. Prime take with Muftal Nabila Abdullahi. Don't you forget, right after that, I share with you my blunt thoughts for the day. But for now... Prime Take, up next on The AM Show. So, so, so uh, tell, me, tell, me, tell me one thing. You, you just spoke about something quite interesting, which has to do with... Um, how uh, Shule Montari, one of the players who has played three World Cups for Ghana, yes. 206, 2010, and 2014, he was found through the school sports system. Milo school, yes, Milo, Milo games. Milo, Milo games. Yes. There are also other sporting disciplines, as in athletics, as in uh, even this uh, volleyball, basketball. Volleyball. Yes. And I remember when I was in secondary school, and as much as I was a terrible player. That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you played. Yeah, I did. Irrespective. I, in fact, you know, I even played a bit of uh, um, a bit of golf. I played a bit of uh, hockey. So Why? Because the instinct was keep up in you. No sports teacher will make things available. Mr. Peter, that was yes. his name. I still remember his name. That is it's it. been like 15 years. But I that is, you see, the, the, the interest was there and the people were interested. So the teachers were serious. Sometimes not even a technical person, but just a teacher who is a performer will take you through. But these days, no, not at all. Everything is academics, academics, academics. And in the academics, we are not seeing it. Because for a child, Right, to have the energy, the stamina, or whatever it is to go, you need to be physically fit. This is a sound mind is found in a sound body. So it isn't like for nothing that our, you know, predecessors, so that's our forefathers, yeah. made sure that we combine academics with sports. It's an integral part of the academic program. But once it's been relegated, that is it. You go and sit down, you can't even walk. You know, no, the kids are too feeble because they don't exercise. I'm if sure you are young, you don't exercise. What are you doing to yourself? <laughs> I'm sure when you were, when you were in the system, uh, served as a district uh, coordinator and all that, I'm sure probably you, you saw stuff that kind of suggested that the school sports system was taking a nosedive. What did you do as a technical man to advise that mm, if we don't take our time within the next five, six, seven, ten years, we'll be losing massive, massive talents? Thank you. You know, we always had federation meetings. The whole Tenka men in the country and women, we met annually. Then it came biennially. We meet and discuss sports for about a week. The national coordinator will assemble all P personnel. Then we we'll go and sit for about a week to discuss and give proposal. This proposal has never got anywhere. It was something we were doing at the time. But when we realized that there was nothing coming out, because imagine the whole country, P personnel will meet. We divide ourselves into groups, the various disciplines, then we interrogate the system as it was and where we are going to, what and what we need to do. All these things were done. 
But you know, the policy makers and the politicians, let me be frank. You know, this time around, we are not being ruled by the national development agenda. We are being ruled by manifesto. You understand? So now I say, when I come as a leader of this country, as a president, this and that and that's what I'm going to do, whether it conforms with the national development plan or not. And sometimes we promise so much that once we get, we will forget some of the promises we did. <laughs> that's quite an interesting one. Yes. And therefore, when we allow ourselves to be, you know, ruled by a manifesto of a group of people, not the national development agenda, then, for instance, I was fortunate to be a member of the NYA board, National Youth Authority, when I was in office. We realized that, no, the youth, the teaming youth, need some centers because at the time how many sports today do we have so we sought out we sought out to build 10 we called them at the time youth resource centers, resource centers. it started very well we made sure things were going on then it curtailed now actually that board was dissolved when uh, the second term of the president came uh, I was no more my member. I had then left office to Nanabi has left uh, Yusuf, the current Minister for Sports. He's now an honorable MP. Yeah. He's left the board. Our board chair then was uh, Francisca Otin, the youngest MP at the time. Yeah. She was the board chair. Slightete, uh, English Amangfro, was the CEO. And we were very busy building this stadium. We call them youth uh, resource, centers. resource centers. Yes, across the country, uh, the Volta one hurriedly was put into place for the last Independence Day. Yeah. These Television. were the structures were massive. These were the structures we were putting up, but it died down. But as I speak now, Hajide Honorable is trying to Bios. pick the one after the other to make sure he completes it. My Bulgar festival should have taken place in that facility because we were hopeful though. Yeah, I remember after the 2017 festival, exactly. you were moving the next festival to Bulgar. Exactly. We were hopeful it to be ready. But the rate at which we were going, then suddenly the contractors, whether they started misbehaving or they, because we knew there was money at NYA to be able to do these things. Uh, dilly dally, dilly dally, dilly dally. Would you that say is it is due to lack of political will for some of these things to happen? Because it's the politicians who take the decisions. That's what I'm saying. That some decisions are taken without the technocrats. No, if, if the technocrats is involved and the technocrat offers an advice, and because the politician has got a political interest, definitely he will have to take a political decision. So you want me to tell you that? <laughs> 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 you know uh, it. But, but, that's, that, but that's the obvious question that I'm asking. No, you see, you have been in there, you have interacted with them, and you have a perfect picture of how the system was and how we can get better. The question is, if we have sought out to do that project, and we give ourselves time, by the end of the ten of the first year, the first term of the president, we would have commissioned all the ten recreation uh, resource centers. And if it didn't happen, so the question is, why? You understand? Why? What happened? So we leave it as it is. You know, we cannot leave it as it is. Because no, definitely. No. <laughs> I say I would do it. At the end of the day, I didn't do it. Or I catered. So. As a national P coordinator and director of sports at the yes. Ghana Education Service. Headquarters, yes. What were the major things you put on the table for the development of school sports in Ghana? Thank you. When I took over office, already I was one of them at the grassroots. Yes. So I need to specify what happened at the grassroots. So I needed to empower all P personnel across the country. So I met my regional coordinators told them what to do to meet all the district municipal district coordinators. You know, we are, we are well structured such that when you say A, B at the headquarters, it goes down to the last person. 
All right. So we came together. We already were in the system before I got there, so I yes. knew what it was. I thought I was leaving the system because it was becoming bored. Yeah. So I became a director, oh, hallelujah. I'm not into administration, so I jumped out of sports. But I made sure in my district, they never lack sports. Equipment were provided, the coordinator, Fortner was my mate. Imagine you are a district director and the PE coordinator is your mate. Yeah. So he lacked nothing. We did all we could, raising our teams and everything. And that went all through. At that point, I thought, oh, I'm not free, I've left sports. Only to be told, hey, go and be the number one in sports in the country, so far as education is concerned. So knowing all that was the background, I climbed up and then started fixing things. For over 10, 15, 20 years, I was the only one who organized capacity building exercise for all the technical men across the regions, across the country. So I divided them into four. You come, we meet for a week. We go through developmental issues, retrain you, give you modalities, what you should do and what you should not do, and how we could revamp sports. And it was a shocker. And I did this to meet the return to sports after the COVID. Yes. I brought all of them around and give them training, retrain them, skill-wise, what have you. I discussed my director general, he understood me and they sponsored it. So, we made sure, I also made sure that all sporting activities run. Funding was provided for all sporting activities to run, right from inter-classes, inter-sections, inter-school, inter-zonals, inter-district, to interregionals. From 2016 till I left office, we never failed. I remember at the point I was in my office, when we were doing the under 13, no the guys were scouting around. I was the local just when they came in and said, Charlie, we spotted this boy at so and so and so and so. When I realized the boy was in a village somewhere in Sefri. So they wanted the boy, I said, oh, you relax. So how can we go to the place? I said, sit down. I just called my regional coordinator that I needed this big, who is in charge of this district. He mentioned, I said, I need him. In my office, within 10 minutes, we contacted the boy and the parents and spoke to them. That was the structure. Sefi, a village in Sefi. Because when we organized my program, a lot of people come around, the cool teams and others, to scout. Yes. This is one example I'm giving you. So I had data. So when we went for these games, at my old computer, the pictures of the kids have data. Call Cynthia, she will tell you. Because we want to monitor them. We knew this was how we got the Sule's, the Asians, and others. So we always monitor. If you get to my office now, you see a lot of data and the kids by picture, by name, by areas. So we did this to revamp sports across until COVID came. And in fact, things were moving up. Uh, you remember the Almighty Azamiti? You remember Cape Coast, 2017? Oh, and, oh and I know, I know. You that. realize this boy didn't win the 100 meters at the end of the day? I, 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 and, and I, yes. I still remember, I remember the likes of Sarkodie, I remember the likes of Ansan, the Beautiful. likes of Gadai. This I, I boy was, was not the best. He didn't win the national festival 100 meters. Even when he was at the University of Ghana, he, was, he wasn't one of the you best. You got the point. Meaning at the time, 2017, when I was doing my thing, there were two or three people better than him. Yes. Historically, 13 records were broken in Cape Coast. You remember? I was there. 13 records in one festival. Records that were 20, 15, yeah, 18 yeah, years old. Yeah. There was one record which was like 24 years old. Beautiful. It took me to do that. So if you ask me what I did, this was what I did. Making sure that sports were holistically revamped from the village, cottage there, up to the top. And the way we did our sports, you see, from the school level, every school in the country, you do interclass. Then you have session, you do intersession. Then every district is divided into zones. You is do it a calendar that you, that you provide for them? Yes, I provide calendar from the headquarters. 
from the one the entire year calendar so my department always produce calendar for the regions to tap from and do their own programs so it's sad that those days if you advise that look don't concurrently do everything consult with your other colleagues so when i'm doing football today that means this officer should be doing for so we can come around to supervise so sometimes the call director hmm, if you can this day i'm doing this this day i'm doing this as it's your move go to central region myself i'm in the north just making sure that what and they were you know happy that the assignment i've given them they are doing it to the letter so sometimes they will inform you that oh Director, on this day, we are here, we are doing our inter-district. You know, the inter-district raises yeah. the regional team. If I have time, I go in there, just to watch what is happening, give advice, and then come back. My job is not only to say, though I'm the director administratively, but I have things that I do, and I have things that I do on the field. So honestly, I had them under my armpits. And everybody reported, because every year you give me a report of your activities, which are put together as a report for the units. And 2020, I got to the headquarters in 2015. 16, 17, 18, 19, 2020, we never drop out. Basic, you know it's B, B, BNR. Yeah. This year, basic, the phone year sentence has seen a high, basic, seen a high, basic, seen a high. Two. It performed within two years. And then the almighty kept goes groom. I remember that they bunch into my office or cameras and said, ah, my friend, what is happening? <laughs> no, that year we were not to have gone for the festival after all these preparations. No, finally, the FD, the financial controller saw me on the corridor moving and said, hey, P, you people, are you sure you are going? I said, oh, yes, we will go. I smiled and said, well, we will go because I knew what I was doing underground. No, he's a financial controller, yeah. but we have the uh, budget officer the accountant so i was on her madam please what i already told the director general please don't let it happen in our time that this year we will not go to national festival he said okay what can we do to know just make sure the captation is paid one captation is paid but then we're about three or four in uh, in areas trenches in areas ali that is exposed and so they shoot the accountant called the controller before me that this is it. We are begging. This is it. So I was sure that something was going to happen. But unfortunately, what happened was not adequate enough. And that meant that maybe I should withdraw. I said, no way. Whatever you can give us. Even the 10 cities, let me know. So that if it is only football, only athletics are going to organize national because my people have prepared. So they said, OK. I sent my budget. It was cut. I sent it again. Adjustment, I sent to us because when I realized this is what I have, I called my coordinator. They were all then in camp because they already set date and everything. And I said, I will not sit down for this to happen. So I said, okay, what do we do? You know, we're on platform. So I called all the 10 regional coordinators at the time. We started discussing. We cannot hold the festival, hold it like we were planning. Because at my time, I, I canceled or I changed. You know, we alternated some of the disciplines. If we play volleyball this year, yeah. next two years, we'll play basketball. And can you imagine? So if there's a volleyball star that comes to SHS1, he has to and win. that year we played, it means while in Form 3, we're going to play basketball. He will not see volleyball again. If it is basketball, by the time we play again, it's also completed, or in the final year, we'll not get the time to play. So what are we doing? So I brought all on board. So that alternation, I seized it. So as we were planning, I realized that no, I just called my condition. So what we have cannot take us through all. So let's drop some of the events. What do you say? Even they suggest that then let's drop some of the events because we were alternating. We said we we're going all. Yeah. So let's see. So that's okay. Drop volleyball, drop hockey, drop table tennis. But Students are in camp preparing for this. Of course, you have fed them. The emotional affection, the psychological that trauma of asking but them to go. When I realized that this is the only way I uphold that flag of organizing a national festival, sometimes you take decisions and be held responsible. So I told them, okay, let's go ahead. It's me. What do you suggest I should do? They suggested, I said, okay, I'll hold it. Drop volleyball. 
drop table tennis, drop hockey. Because at the time, hockey to the, the kids, the equipment were not there. So the information went out. Then people got angry. Ah, this man is I causing financial loss. I remember the story. You, 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 I wasn't hearing. <laughs> a guy in Cape Coast, uh, FM, yeah. was blowing the thing. Me, I didn't even hear. You came to my office yeah. with my machine, say, Charlie, you don't know what's happening. Listen to me. Let's do what interview are you granting to Muftar? I said, no, my, my, my boss, let's grant you an interview. Do you know what is happening? Do you hear what people are saying? I said, oh, 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 is that it? Let's go. And when I spoke, yeah, that you, guy became silent. You offered the explanation. I, I yes, because I was I to abandon the whole national festival or drop some of the disciplines? Table tennis, eight athletes, four boys, four girls. You understand? Volleyball, maximum. 12. So we look at it and say, no, let's drop. And it was a holistic decision. So people didn't understand. We, we realized that, I mean, suck, or asking this woman to go home was not the best, but we had to do it to make, make sure that we did the festival. So I informed by then too, I was in a good relationship with the uh, various associations. Yes. So I called, hello. We can't do our discipline no, because they will all be there. Some of the heads of the associations come to supervise. We can give them the opportunity yeah. and even officiate. So I said, table tennis, I'm sorry, we cannot do it. Volleyball, I'm sorry, we cannot do it. Hockey, I'm sorry. He said, what? Then I said, why? Oh, I said, this is my high deco. He said, okay, wait, wait, wait. Don't cancel it yet. Within three hours, table tennis brought a check. They asked me, how bad do I need to be able to retain them? I, I told them, they brought a check. So I called the accountant and said, I've checked for this discipline. Co-op it. Uh, hockey brought a check and equipment immediately that they cannot drop it. We should do it. No, this is it. We was on a very good standing relationship with them. with them. They understood me and said, no, 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 no. Then the association will sponsor, will sponsor the national festival. It's never happened before. You get my point? It never happened before. And we had the best national festival, as you can witness to. Yeah, because I, 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 I remember asking you <laughs> when, you, when you handed over the flag to the upper yes. east for them to hold I was like, uh, if upper east, they don't have any facility. So where, where are you expecting them to go? Organize? This is another issue. You know, it is all the region that had up to date facilities. We broke records in Cape Coast because we had a very beautiful and Absolutely. new tracks and all. Tracks and third. If you go to Kumasi, you don't have a problem. Cape Coast, you don't have a problem. Tamale, no problem. But some of the areas, Nobolga, I nearly wept. The tracks. I wanted to go with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, when it was time for athletics, we were asking tracks to come off load sand so that we we'll fill some areas. Meanwhile, we are coming to run. It was not easy. So that year, I told myself, no. Though sports is meant to be rotational from this day region to this, we had the time to, but I told them no. I'm going around the country to identify where the facilities are. So until further notice, for likely we're building the uh, resource centers. Until then, there are certain regions you cannot host national festival because of the injuries and other things that we suffer. So I was coming up with that. So there'll be specific regions Luckily, some of the schools are very good. For, if you go to Kumasi like this, Prempe College or Pokwari, yeah. Wesley, yeah. they all have. So places like that, we don't have a problem. And the stadium is there for athletics. Even Westco Park, where they do athletics, Prempe, they were very good. But the stadium was there. So that was what I also thought of doing, so that we kept the injuries. But the very good ones all got injured. But so what happens in Cape Coast? Similar to what happened in Kumasi. As at the time, the Accra Tata was wiped off, yes. even as we speak. So when we come to Accra, where were we going? Lagoon or where? Or oh, Elwak. <laughs> that is it. We went to Elwak, it was like a concrete floor. Yeah. Elwak Tata. Yeah. So, infrastructure is another problem. That's why at the NYA board, we pushed that these facilities should be put in place. And I pray and hope they'll complete all because Haji they promised Pius that they'll finish all. So that alone, and it's multi a basketball court, volleyball court, table tennis, everything is inclusive. You mentioned something that was quite interesting for me, which is mm -hmm. which has to do with the data of 
the athletes that you yes. have during during your events are you able to monitor their progress in their various schools and how you are able to let them come into the uh, national federations and be devolved do, do you have anything like that i have fortunately i tax all my coordinators to make sure that these people are looked at because they have only three years span so after that festival those who were living, we monitored this uh, charity they went to. Oh, okay. Yes. That was how Azamiti got there. Oh, okay. The uh, University of Ghana, yes. okay. We monitored. And then also, when you are doing national festival, the security services, they all come down. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. the security services, the armed forces, air force. Because I've covered, I've covered some of them, so I know. <clears throat> Very well. They also move in there, and we give them the morale. If that's what you can do, go. And a lot of them are doing very, very, very well. Because of this thing that I had with me, having the keys and monitoring the data. <clears throat> you know, I was invited to present the paper in Casablanca on our school sports system. Uh, the then Minister for Youth and Sports. Thank you, Siam. Sir Charlie, let's go. I said, okay. We flew in there <clears throat> and I presented the paper on what we do in Ghana. About 60 countries, the US, Germany, France, UK, name them. And at the end of the day, the way the people clapped, it's like, it is not, most countries do prefer, you know, they identify some people, they just right, take they them don't have go. a specific structure exactly. how they want to go about it. But when they got to the our structure is right from the village school, inter-school, intersession, uh, Inter-class, intersession, inter-school, inter-zonal, inter-district, then inter-regional. So by the time you get that lab, oh, you are polished. Because you go through s different coaches who polish you up to that point. Because at the region, for instance, if you are in a regional camp, all your skills are polished. Exactly. Yeah. Your running skill, your playing skill, your jumping skill, your throwing skill, they are all polished. Because at that point, you know, the National Sports Authority, we have seasoned coaches for all the disciplines in each of the regions. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the team up with I was just about coming there where people often say that we lack the technical men to be able to handle no, these. No, if you get into the national, uh, the regional team, yeah. all the regions, the Polish show, and then when you come to the national festival itself, we make sure the right things are done. And we have people all over the place who actually come in to help. So I presented that paper, and then I see him ask me, so the competition, how is it? I said, boss, we are not a member of, we are not a member of the International School Sports Association. How? That association was formed back in 1974 or so. So what do we do? We don't have to register as a member. I said, what? And I would like to say, come here. I said, yes. He said, go for the forms. So at Casablanca, I took the forms. I registered and paid the admission fee. So as I speak now, Ghana has gone international. After all our school activities, national festival, we yeah. select him. Every two years, we go. And that after, after the Cape Coast event, you know, Coach Utia Kente were all there. Yeah. I said, hey, yeah. select the best for me. So every discipline, they were just selecting athletes because I wanted to keep the data. So all the discipline were performed in, they selected at least. Then after Casablanca, they said, okay, eh, uh, that year, the Commonwealth Games, yes. the promise they give you at least, they couldn't go, they couldn't win medals, and so the, those allowances had been brought back. So as they said, oh, chief, are you ready? I said, yes, I have a team. So we're taking football and athletics to the International School Sports Association game is for under 13. Started planning, everything. That was in the office when he called me and said, hey, see me immediately. So I got up, you see my office yeah. and the sports ministry. He was then the deputy minister for even sports. I got in a knock, the secretary told me, oh, he's not there, he's gone. I said, ah, they might just call me that I should come. That was the day he was fired. So I said, he just called that I should come. So they've called him immediately, he's gone out. I said, ah. So I called him, so I'm here, so okay, I'll be back. I, I, I'm, I'm on my way somewhere, so I, I went. Not only I was called to the presidency to be fired. 
quite unfortunate. And but, I, yeah, uh, I definitely, but at the end of the day, yeah. we were able to go appear for the first time at the internet. We met about 60 countries. And every two years, we were to go. So we are in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to prepare for the next one, but COVID came in. Came in. Yes. Uh, but tell me quick, well, something uh, quick. Uh, because there's always this belief that sometimes, if you go back to schools, sometimes the head teachers don't even value physical education. So it also makes it very difficult for <laughs> these children to come out. And in fact, they, we actually even believe that when it's time for physical education, that's the time for everyone to run to the house, especially in our villages. I'm from one. So PE time, we go to the house, we eat and come back. It was happening. But when but has that changed? Yes, to some extent. But when the leadership itself didn't see anything good with sports, so how do you even monitor those people again? But during my tenure, no. The coordinators were on the ground because every school has a sports secretary who is a member of the district or the zonal sports activity. So they made sure the sports secretary will not allow it. Okay. Now, also talk to me about the data. When you assemble these athletes, do you share with the national federations and say that these are the talents we had when we went for event A, B, C? So these talents, if the federations pick them up, they're going to be access to the country. They come to meet themselves. Because during the festival, all of them are assembled yes, to monitor and select. So they, we work hand in hand. They all know. So some of them, swimming for instance, you know, we don't do swimming in their schools. Yeah. But I was bringing it on board, fencing. So some of the games I brought on board were fencing, cross country in the loop. You know, those that were going to the route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. So I changed cross country the, on, on the road to the loop. You stand there, you see them move from end to end till they finish. We monitor them. Hockey. Hockey was played. How do you get to senior high school and then start training to play hockey? In fact, that's, uh, why so I did junior hockey. The, I established the first time I saw a hockey stick was when I was in secondary school. But this time around, I established we play junior hockey. And the Hockey Association provided material, bags of sticks and balls. And all regions had it. The next thing I did was uh, athletics. Yes. You see how that's, athletics that's actually is. where I was coming to. Yes. You see how athletics was. Mm. You go and sit down. You close your festival with one soccer match. Goal, goal, you close. But I closed my festival with athletics. And anybody who came, they were sitting on tons. Because that is what is going to make you either win the festival or lose the championship. So during my tenure, we used athletics to end the festival at the closing ceremony. And when you come there, you have something to actually <laughs> be happy about. One, one interesting thing that actually happened was the fact that I remember in 2017 when I was seated next to my uh, former secondary school head master. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he was there. Uh, Mr. Bismarck and then my PA teacher, Peter, yeah. Peter Averu. They were, they were all there for, for that. And then um, my former school, Boku Secondary School, were there. Oh, Averu. Averu yeah. was my mate. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, he had wow. A brutal I, accident. Thank oh, God he didn't die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I heard that was quite a Averu question. was my mate, yes. And that was where Larwa, Larwa Sakat, that girl from yeah, Boku Secondary yeah, had an incredible uh, run and all that. Exactly. I remember recently the uh, Ghana Athletics, Ghana Education Service, and the Ministry of Youth and Sports came together to organize athletics championship in Kumasi, Kumasi. just recently. Just how important that such synergy, if developed, will be able to bring athletics back to the highest level. Because people, people look at school sports as an era that is non-existent anymore. And um, in fact, from where I sit, my opinion doesn't matter, but I think that a lot needs to be done if we really, really want to have uh, talents uh, that, that, would, that would fly high the flag of this country. You see, these were some of my uh, co collaboration. No, I even brought the GFA Okraku to my office we discussed how we could develop soccer and revamp it. We planned that we were going to put, to create soccer academies in schools across the country. We discussed this. Before I left office, Otia Kenten and I 
we got sponsorship from FIFA to play under 15 and select the team and Regi go somewhere. Regional competitions, yes. Yes. So that program, Bawa is my close ally, the CEO yeah. of Athletics. Yeah. He's not a president. He's not the president, yes. He comes to my office, we discuss issues. Are good. So anytime I organize national festival, for instance, I have the photo finish machine, free of charge. Yeah. He comes with his team, they make sure, because as I am tell you, that if there was no photo finish, <laughs> you don't know what it was like. <laughs> yes. No, I brought them all on board. So we worked. So I'm not surprised they organized this. But how effectively GS participated is yet to be. You know, I don't even want to go there. So honestly, you will have to go there because GS is they, so honestly, they own the kids. They own the children. They own the kids. They own the children. Yes. So honestly, that program, you know, someone called me that, hey, what is happening? Another Intaco in Kumasi. I said, oh, it's not Intaco. We are organizing some national something. So if this collaboration comes, yes, it will work at the top, but still not at the grassroots. But if it happens that way, it means all those at the bottom will say, oh, there will be a competition, this level of competition. So they will start preparing towards it and get selected. But that thing that happened, we just had to depend on the good ones that we know. Fortunately, Ashanti region had done their usual intercourse. Whether there will be national festival or not, whether the uh, director P or national coordinator sends calendar or not, they have their own calendar, old ones. They make sure they do what they should do. And fortunately, the new regional director, Ashanti, yeah. Dr. Mankra, he was our colleague. Oh, okay. He's a P person, a district P coordinator. I see. Yes. As a man who has occupied the topmost position when it comes to Ghana school sports, what is that advice that you would have to offer for us to bring school sports back to life? The final one, then we wrap up. Yeah. You see, we need to discuss sports holistically. And whatever is due sports, in the national budget, in the national calendar, GES should ensure that because we have a whole unit and that unit is enough to trickle down and organize sports at all levels. But if today there's no money, tomorrow there's no money and things like that, no, we cannot get anywhere. But yes, we can also follow the associations, the various associations that tap from us. Because there is no association in this country that doesn't tap from us. Um, even fencing, I introduced fencing in, to the senior high school now. It will interest you to know that our students were playing fencing internationally. But we don't play inter-school fencing in Ghana. But they were playing international, winning laurels. Our students were doing swimming and winning laurels. All the international competition we have in swimming is from our school. So I was there when the secretary walked to my office and so this is I said, don't worry. The next time we're doing a national festival, we have swimming swimmers all over across. Yeah. Some are just attached to some organizations. So those schools that are doing, those regions that have our athletes, our students are swimmers. If it's Kumasi, we go to tech, we'll do swimming. If it's Accra, we'll go to Logan, we'll do swimming. So anytime we have festival this way, even if need be, that all interregional swimming will be taking place in another region where the rest are taking place, I will do it. So you see, we don't have to wait for uh, policy makers to do their own thing. We need to push our agenda to and make sure sports is actually developed. We don't need much. We don't need much. And then also make P another priority in the level of academic ladder. Colleges should make sure that P is given what it used to have. They should train more of P personnel, those who are living. So, you know, sometimes they live Winneba. When they get to a school, a staff, they say, oh, we don't have time for P. Can you teach English? Can you teach math? Then they change you. Some will refuse, some will take it up. So P personnel should be bold. They should love the profession and pick it up from where it has fallen. Make the note for policy makers to know that no. 
is not working. No, every discipline in Ghana, so far as sports is concerned, they depend on the schools. You can't get them from anywhere else. But if you don't turn attention to it, that is where we have come to, we have gotten to now. It appears sports is no longer a priority when it comes to policy decision makers. Because if it was, they would be interested in ensuring that at the grassroots level, the right structures are in place to ensure that it trickles up. Because you don't invert the pyramid. You need to that is come it. from the foundation that is and it. climb up there. And one of the things you said that was quite profound for me was the fact that many, many people actually have now prioritized the, the book over the physical education side or the sports aspect of it. And if you want, really want to reposition Ghana sports, then it is important that school sports is given the priority it deserves. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Domenia was my guest today on Prime Tech. Thank you very much for your time. Continue to enjoy the rest of our programs. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm Thank grateful. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
Because if it's a question of counting who votes for me and who doesn't vote for me, I shouldn't be here because you don't vote for me. But, but that is not my concern. Mr. President started so well, and then it tapered off because, yes, you are president for all. Why did he have to bring in and you don't vote for me? About 100,000 people plus vote for the MPP in the Volta region, though. The last election gave them their first seat in the Volta region, the Hohoi seat. But before I come back to you, let me get to this oath of office, because he referenced it himself, and it is instructive to take note of what the oath says. It says, I, the name of the person comes in, having been elected to the high office of president of the Republic of Ghana, do, in the name of the almighty God, swear or solemnly affirm that I will be faithful and true to the Republic of Ghana, that I will at all times preserve, protect, defend, the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, and that I dedicate myself to the service, service, and well-being of the people, regardless of who they are, of the Republic of Ghana, and to do right to all manner of persons. All manner, regardless of who they are. The people of the Volta region fit into that category. The oath of office says all manner of people, not all manner of people who voted for me. Someone. Please remind Mr. President of that. All manner of people, simple. I feel this was grossly miscalculated, even macabre humor. What was the need for that? It was like spitting in the faces of the people. About 15% of voters in the Ashanti region, especially those in the Zangos, vote for the NDC. But would the president dare go to that region and spew the same ignominious, demeaning rhetoric he poured forth on the already suffering people of the Volta region? I'm not trying to take sides. I'm just saying that, look, for me, I have sides from the Volta end, the OT end. I have sides from Mampong as well. So I fit in both circles. But would the president do that? Some other presidents in other jurisdictions cancel whatever they are doing, inclusive of vacations, invitations to swearing in ceremonies, guest speakerships, name them. When occurrences like has happened with the spillage of the Akusum would Dam happen in their countries, not our president. And when he finally does, after four days or so, goes there, this is what he says, and people try to defend this. Chaligana for where the thing catch right here, pass rationalization. And this wouldn't be the first time. Remember when our president disrespected a chief and his people, especially, you know, in the Volta region, telling them that, oh, you want an e-block and all of that, then go and put it up yourself. Go and put it up yourself. This is not the first time. There was that other chief who, for health reasons, couldn't stand when the, the national anthem was being sung. Dug at him. When the president's own daughter did it, that was fine. How soon we forget. Those are the very circumstances I am talking about. And it is becoming sickening, disheartening. But while we spew such pettiness, where our misleaders should focus on is getting destroyed. Enter the economy and our debt restructuring. Which brings me to my next slide. Ghana's external debt is still that monster in the room. If you look at take a focus on our commercial creditors, you look at our proposal, the haircut on the principal, 30 to 40 percent. That is no small, you know, haircut. Haircut on interests and coupons, not more than 5 percent. Maturity period, not more than 20 years. Next slide. But if you look at our target vis-a-vis -vis the dynamics, the total external debt, 30 billion, the debt eligible for restructuring, 20 billion. That leaves a pitfall of about 10 billion. And the restructuring target, 10.5 billion. You ask yourself whether where we are headed is even safe. Looking at our external creditors and what they have said in Reuters, among others, they have expressed their angst about this. This will stay with us for a long time and it will bite us. Let's go to the next slide. If you look at our maturing eurobonds between 2022 and 2023 and 2026, over the next three years. The amounts to be paid, issuance year 2013, maturing year after, after 10 years, 2023, $148 million. For the 2021 to 2025, one five twenty five million million. And for the 2020 to 2026, $1.25 billion. Put all of that together, you're looking at $1.9 billion. The tail of the tape. That's the hurdle. Let's go to the next slide. We're going to have to scale. 
But if you look at same and look at the negative market response, Ghana's sovereign dollar bonds dropped sharply just this Tuesday after a government presentation of debt reworking scenarios that aimed at a haircut of 30 to 40 percent on the principal disappointed investors. Which investor would be happy with this? But we dug ourselves into this pit ourselves. Our misleaders ensured that we got there. Now, some bonds fell to their lowest level in three months. Next slide. And this is where we find ourselves. But when it comes to all of this, you remember that Zambia has also had its woes and has taken a step ahead, been a step ahead in dealing with the situation. Zambia recently was giving us some advice directly to Ghana. Don't mistake it. They were giving Ghana advice. And this is what they had to say. This is Zambia's Minister of Finance and National Planning, Situmbeko Musokotwani. And uh, pardon me if I murdered his name. But this is what Zambia is telling us. Get restrictive laws on debt accumulation. That is what they are saying. You can't just accumulate debt like we are doing. We claim there's a ceiling, but we go past it. We get money printed. We think we can fall on the central bank. This is where it has let, left us. Get restrictive laws on debt accumulation. And... We put a law in Parliament, this is Zambia, which tied my hands to say going forward, you can't be like those in the past. So we tried our hands for Parliament to have more power and restrictions on borrowing. Can we not do the same in Ghana? It's not rocket science. The Zambians are doing it. The Zambians are no better than we are. The Black Star of Africa is not yet dead. But before I wrap everything up, I played for you the video of the president. Let's watch Hishilema, the Zambian president, on something he had to say or share in recent times about luxurious vehicles and all of that. I want to cap off my thoughts with that because while we talk about the failings of our economy, our leaders, misleaders, are living large. I want you to listen to this and tell me whether we can't really do what Hishilema talks about in Zambia. Why are you using money to buy a VX for the mayor? That VX for the mayor can put toilets in all the markets in your constituents. Think along those lines. Hmm. can still drive a nice car but it doesn't have to be a VX. If you want to drive a VX, buy your own. <laughs> buy your own. Why do you want to pretend you know that you cannot afford a VX? Why do you want to pretend? Because you are using taxpayers' money. Now you should pretend. But a decent Hilux, double cab, aircon. It's a fantastic vehicle. Why you want a VX? Why you want a car costing $200,000? When that $200,000, you can put toilets in all the markets in that constituency. Town clerk wants a VX. Mayor wants a VX. Deputy mayor wants a VX. Whose money are you using? Whose money are you using? Which brings me to my next and final slide before I wrap up with my thoughts for you. Let's get to that final slide. He's talking about VX vehicles, V8s among others, that many of our misleaders are using. In 2021, the Finance Ministry asked Parliament to approve a $28 million loan from the National Investment Bank, the same bank that is in trouble now to purchase 275 vehicles for MPs. They also presented a similar request for a $3.5 million car loan for members of the 8th Council of State. In 2023, the Controller and Accountant General's Department staff demanded Land Cruiser Prados instead of Toyota Camrys for official duties. Why? Because we've created a system where everyone feels entitled to luxury because they can, they can leech on the taxpayer's money. So it to be more, bruh, and tall with Camry. It is not the taxpayer's money you use to ride V8s around. But we tolerate that in Ghana. 
Which is why I want to ask the misleaders of our day. How do you feel as MPs, ministers, presidents, vice presidents, when you go into communities and you are the only ones in luxurious vehicles and everyone else is either walking or using rickety vehicles? Do you not feel any pangs of guilt? I would. Does your conscience not prick you? Your conscience, does it not prick you? You see, instead of distributing wealth, our misleaders have become experts at cornering it and sharing it among themselves. For a long time, we have had one looting brigade after another. The economy of the typical African politician is always excellent, while that of the masses is always a turbulent struggle that requires real ingenuity to survive. It reminds me of that 1991 movie, OPM, Other People's Money, featuring Danny DeVito. Other People's Money. State money. So let's use it. Today, we have all the malaises in our country and yet, with all our resources, we are not solving them. Up to when will this happen? Ghana for food for thought on a Friday morning. I do this because I love Ghana. And I hope you love Ghana enough to see the writing on the wall. My name is Benjamin Akako. These are my blunt thoughts shared with you, raw, hot, unedited, undiluted. God bless Ghana and make her great and strong. This is how the vice president touched down in the South Tong district capital, Sudakofe. His first point of call was New Bakpa, thence to Komboni and Sope, where he interacted with chiefs and expressed his sympathy to flood victims. Dr. Bomia described the devastation of property as major disaster and challenged officials of the Volta River Authority to find a more sustainable way of dealing with the spillage of the Akusumbo Dam, considering the rising concerns of climate change. This, I am told, is the biggest flooding disaster we have since, seen since 1963. So it's been 60 years since the last such disaster took place. And it has affected so many livelihoods, so many people, so much property. So many farms, so many fishing um, implements, and so on. So it has devastated our livelihoods around this area. And when I look at the community in Sokoe, when I was coming in, so many places are flooded, so many houses. And it is a very sad event. And as I am here uh, with you, let me really express my sympathies. Babanami, we will take into account all the needs that have been expressed. To be expressed a lot of needs for the community, and we will take all of that into account as the community, uh, as the government prepares the support package to the communities. It's very important that we look, as I, I have mentioned it already to VRA, that we need to look for long-term solutions to this flood because it will happen this year we can deal with it now what about next year because climate change appears to be taking hold a few years ago we were all worried about the water levels of the volta dam that it was too low now we are worried that it is too high and so we need to look for engineering solutions to the spillage of the water out of the Volta Dam so that it doesn't affect the communities. Because if we don't look for long-term solutions, we'll have to be dealing with, with these disasters on a regular basis with climate change. So I've challenged VRA and NADMO to really put their heads together and get the engineers to work and look at how we can build a very efficient way of spilling the, the, the water over time. Meanwhile, to add to government efforts, the vice president personally donated a sum of 160,000 Ghana cities to the eight affected districts to support relief efforts. Here is the Minister of Information, Kojopo Nkrumah, presenting the cash donation to the chiefs and people of Sukwe. 
he's been traveling across some of the towns to see for himself the impact uh, of the relief efforts that we are putting in place. As he mentioned, the government support is in various stages. First is the temporary support for our brothers and sisters who have been displaced. And as he mentioned, there are 20 locations where the support is going. And so even this morning, uh, I do understand that part of our relief efforts that were supposed to come here, came here this morning, as they are going to various other um, locations and it will be done intermittently as the numbers are monitored, as the days are monitored and as more support should be coming in that area. In addition to that, uh, His Excellency the Vice President in his own capacity, as he has been going round, has asked um, that we make available to the eight communities or the eight districts that have been affected by the spillage, uh, his personal contribution of 160,000 Ghana cities, which we are going to give to the regional minister to be used to support the victims in the eight districts that have been affected. This is in addition to the government of Ghana support. Well, that is the latest on that situation. Uh, we've had the president go there. We've had the vice president go there. But what is the state of the people? Well, joining us for a conversation on this subject, we have Carlos Caloni, my colleague. He finds himself in Sugakope currently. Carlos, what is the latest you can report uh, from Sugakope on this incident and the plight of the people? From Sugakope in the South Tong district of the Volta region, where the National Democratic Congress uh, is here to present some relief items to affected or to flood victims uh, across about 11 constituencies in this region and one in the uh, eastern region, the Sujaman, uh, uh, you know, district uh, to be specific. And a lot of dignitaries are expected to be here. Uh, we are told that the party chairman, um, Johnson Asiedwinkiti is expected to be here and a couple of others including the general secretary of the party uh, as well as some big wigs and earlier on I saw James Kluche Abeji as well as the MP for South Tongu, uh, Kobla Woyoma among other party dignitaries. Uh, we'll be speaking to the uh, regional secretary pretty soon so he can give us details of what the well that is my colleague carlos caloni we'll try to get uh, the connection patched through one more time he finds himself in soga copper currently and it has to do with uh, the plight of our brothers and sisters in that community in different parts of the Volta region covering different expanses of land. Uh, Carlos, can you hear me now? Democratic Congress, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, the party leadership, um, the minority in parliament, and as we speak, we have the national chairman, Johnson Asiedun Ketia, the general secretary, Fifi Fiavi Kote and uh, minority leader with uh, MPs in parliament and other party big wigs gathered here this morning to do this, this um, donation. And in actual fact, this is going to um, 11 constituencies that have been affected by this uh, flood uh, as a result of the. Uh, spillage of the Akosombo and Pom dams. And um, these constituencies are the three towns, uh, North Town, Central Town, South Town. We also have Anglo, Keta, Ketu South. And then uh, the other side, we have Pando constituency, North Dine constituency, Afajato constituency, and South Dine constituencies, making 10 constituencies in the Volta region. And then we also have the items here for S Still struggling with uh, the feed there. We'll try to remedy the situation. It all has to do with the spillage of the Akosombo Dam, which has left some of our brothers and sisters in dire straits. We showed you videos 
uh, during the news review, as we have done over the last uh, week plus, of just how pathetic their situation uh, is there. Let's try to reconnect with Carlos Caloni. I think the connection's still a bit uh, difficult. We'll try to work it out. Galosuta in the Anglo constituency, then we move to Bakpa in the central town, then we end today's one uh, tour at Mepe. Then the national officers will leave, and then we also have plans for our council of elders from the region, um, led by His Excellency Dan Abodakbi and um, Right Honorable Do Ajaho, former Speaker of Parliament. From Monday, they are expected to continue the top uh, communities in. the uh, regional secretary of the National Democratic Congress here in the Volta region. Now, we would want to know the details of these relief items that you're sharing and what metrics you're going to use to this. In bags of rice, uh, 500 boxes of cooking oil. We have 500 boxes of um, uh, tin fish and then uh, 1,000 uh, packs of Vortic mineral water that will be going fishing actually has been taken into consideration depending I uh, mean based on the level of devastation um, you know the three towns are most affected um, so far then uh, we have the Anglo side and Keta and Ketu South. And um, the fact of the matter is that for them, they were recently hit by the Tada waves. You know, when His Excellency John Dramani Mahama sent some relief items there. And some people even moved from the shore or the coast to this side that has been hit currently uh, by the uh the the spillage of the dams the flood you know so we fatted all this and did a distribution based on um the number of house houses and people that have been displaced so i believe that this will go a long way to at least alleviate the suffering of our people the level of you know um devastation that has taken place and what we are seeing we are praying that the government will actually listen to the plight of the people you know and give them some um you know places to at least lay their heads because many of them are kept in uh, classrooms camps and other places some have moved to um, take refuge elsewhere. Okay. So you believe that uh, by these relief items they'll be able to get some respite? Definitely. And uh, there should be a compensation package prepared for these people. There should be a resettlement plan by the VRA and the central government. And as we speak, you know, you when you were coming, I believe you saw the the bridge the sogakope bridge since this um uh, um dam has a spillage if you look at the velocity of water the volume and the speed at which the the the, the water flows we are afraid the ghana highway authority and the authorities concerned should be able to assess this bridge very well check its integrity so that we do not face any catastrophe in this part you know so the government the um, corporate ghana and should also come in should come in individuals they should all come in to assist the people at this very moment there has been called for government to declare a state of emergency we believe that government will listen to that and then uh, recently, there was an appeal coming from the Mepe areas, you know, that the Saglame 
housing project affordable, you know, should be released to these people temporarily. So these are things you think that the, the government should, 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 should listen to? Okay. The committee that they have formed, the people are asking for representation on the committee. Definitely he who feels his knows it best. Let them, um, the government listen and then make sure that these things are put you know, right for the people to be saved. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, also, the Ghana Health Service has also deployed some mobile clinics. We want them to increase it and then they must also provide the necessary drugs that they will take care of the people. Because as we speak, the water itself has been contaminated, uh, okay. polluted, and we cannot use okay. the water. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, James. Uh, James is the uh, regional secretary for the National Democratic Congress in the Volta region. And uh, I have with me uh, James, another James actually, James Clutin Aveji here. Uh, we'll be talking to him. But before we go to him, I have the uh, constituency chairman of the Northtown constituency, who himself is a victim of this flood situation to briefly share his story with us. We understand that you have been affected. How, how badly uh, have you been affected? Thank you, Joy News. This is CK Akawote, North Tonga, chairman. My house is one of the biggest houses that's submerged. And uh, it contains a whole area. And there are many, many people around that community. Most of them are, they have mad buildings. You can't see any of them now. You can't do anything. You can't reach the place with that boat. So we are, there's nothing we call a home. Out of 11 constituencies, Mepo have 10,000 out of the 26,000 affected. So let's take it, that is almost the whole area. No, so we are very affected. Okay. Thank you so much. So that was the uh, uh, constituency chairman for the North Tongue constituency. Now I'll be engaging James Cloutier, Aveji to give us some uh, uh, details of this situation. Now, first of all, uh, compensation is high on the demand list as well as relocation to Saglemi. Is this something that uh, Parliament will be pushing uh, to ensure that there's uh, 26,000 plus people are compensated duly? Definitely, um, this is a disaster we all know. Whether it is caused by the negligence of somebody or natural, it is a disaster that the people who are affected, the victims, definitely must be compensated. Uh, they have lost all their properties, uh, their belongings. Some houses have been affected. So definitely government must have a package for the people who have been affected. And so if compensation is something on the demand, I fully support that. Because you cannot work throughout your life and then within a day or two, you lost everything as a result of the, the spillage. Now, we should all accept that VRA has made a mistake. Uh, they have delayed for too long in the spillage. You know, this spillage must be staggered so that it will not have this effect that we are seeing now. But because they need to do that in order to save the dam, it's affecting the people at the lower portion of the Volta. So definitely that mistake which has affected people, the victims must be compensated by the government. What form of compensation? We've had houses uh, uh, demolished or I mean uh, thrown out of gear and all that. Uh, we're looking at government reconstructing these homes for people and is this something feasible that government can really do? Yeah, those people who lost houses must get, regain their houses back. So government must put up a, some form of uh, a package because it's not everybody who is affected on the same level. There are people who are more affected than the others. People who lost their houses must be given back square to, 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 to lay their heads. People who do not lose their houses, but at least some properties have been affected, they must also be compensated on that level. So there needs to be some kind of assessment. After the assessment, we we'll know each of the victims what form of compensation should they receive. But definitely the compensation will not be the same for everybody. It needs to be rated according to what you have lost as a result of the spillage. What do you think Parliament can do under the circumstance to shape that 
uh, you know, a compensation package uh, so that we don't get some people getting it and some not getting it. What, what, what role can Parliament play in that regard? Yeah, I think that first of all, Parliament uh, as an institution will help in a way that whatever package the government wants to give to the affected people need to be brought to Parliament for Parliament to look at it. If there will be a the need for Parliament to approve some facility, as soon as the government brings that facility to Parliament, we will be willing to approve that one in order for government to be able to provide the needed package for the people. The government, through those institutions, uh, completed the assessment and come up with a package. Parliament will be willing to approve that facility for the people to benefit from that. Now, finally, before I let you go, there's this concern that the government needs to declare state of emergency so they can actually get some resources and international attention towards this crisis. From where you sit, what do you make of government's own handling of the situation? and also the call for this uh, declaration of state of emergency across the eight affected districts. Well, I think that the government so far, to me personally, has not done well. well. Uh, we all heard when the issue happened in Sierra Leone, the government of Ghana donated uh, a whooping $1 million to support the people of another country. Now it is happening in our own country. What we have heard so far, it's an amount of 160,000 which was given by the vice president. That was from his personal resources? From, from personal resources. From the government itself, we have not seen anything yet, or I have not heard anything. So I think that the government must come in quickly, and then because the spillage is still continuing, I support the call for declaring the state of emergency. That will call for international support, so that if government alone cannot provide the support for the people. At least we can get support from other countries. Like we did to Sierra Leone, probably Sierra Leone will be able to pay back by giving us something. So government should declare that and I support that call. All right. Thank you so much, uh, James Clute Aveji, for speaking to us here. That was James Clute Aveji giving us his thoughts about the government's own way of handling the situation. And he believes that a lot more needs to be done to uh, bring some respite to uh, flood victims across the eight uh, uh, you know, district. Now, I have with me uh, Maxwell Lugudor. Lugudor. He is the more or less. Um, uh, okay, introduce us. I know that you 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 won the primaries here in South Tong, and the way the politics works, it appears that you will soon be going into parliament, isn't that? Yeah, sure. So it's like uh, an MPP candidate in Bantama. Exactly. All right. So tell us, uh, how has this flood situation affected? Uh, people in this uh, Southton constituency? Very, very seriously. Uh, you know, we have most of our communities and our resource centers by the banks of the river. Uh, starting from Tademe, Tefle, Vume, Sukwe, uh, all the way to Amutinu, Akbeve, Chachukope, Gejekuta, and then along the other bank uh, from uh, Agodomi, uh, Dechaume, and all the other places along the bank have all been affected. Uh, because you see we have some creeks also into the inland and usually you realize that for a long time since 6368 water has not gone into most of these creeks and so some low-lying areas people decided to go build at those places and those that are right at the bank of the river and so the amount and volume of water that came definitely had to spread to the side so people got affected and then you know we have a rice farm here Gatko turned into Wienko and other things and so they have a canal that goes to the farm. And so, you know, it went directly to pick the water source from the river. And so when it happened, also Asuka Kopenov, Agokboinu and the Kundupu, the water spread also through the canals, also into these communities. That is how come the Komboni Hospital or Polyclinic was affected. And so when you realize the clinic is now closed now. And unfortunately, our mortuary at the clinic also got affected people were asked to come and move their dead bodies to safer ground. And also the powerhouse that supplies electricity to the whole of South Tong and some other 
uh, districts around us also got submerged. So as we speak now, we are being rushing with ele uh, electricity. I'm sure Ada and Akachi are coming on stream to help us uh, with our power situation. So it's affected almost everybody. You see, because also we don't have pipe on water in most of these communities, people rely directly on getting drinking water from uh, the river. And once this has happened, it's affected it. Even the pure water that has been produced directly from the river also is a source of suspect. Okay. But those that are using boreholes are the ones we are solely relying on now. So that is the extent. It's not only those whose homes have been taken over by the flood that are affected. The whole of the community is being affected. Okay, but there is a concern. Uh, we have been to the North Town constituency, we've been to the Central Town constituency, as well as the South Town constituency. And the concern from the South Town constituency particularly is that about 39 communities have been affected uh, from Agave, Dabala, all those places. But it appears that relief items seem to be going to the North area and um, residents have been blaming uh, you the leaders for not making much noise and so uh, international organizations donor you know partners are all focusing on MEPEP what are you going to do from today to ensure that those people in the South Town constituency places like Dodoe, Kope, Agbeve and all those places get this relief items I must admit that MP has been on the ground. He was in the waters. He went to uh, solidarize with the affected people. Myself, I've been off the scene for some time. I came back and we went to all the places. My vice, uh, constituency vice uh, chairperson is here. My constituency chairman is here. They've gone to few places. But the unfortunate situation as we have here is that, yes, we must admit that the level of devastation caused in Mepe, especially in North Tongue, it's, it's, it's very critical. And so the people didn't even have places around that they could move in to perch with their neighbors because buildings have been completely submerged you can only see roofs the videos you saw on social media so the level of ravaging that went on in Mepe was was, was terrible but for South Town, those who were so close to the river were the ones that are affected some people have their family homes so instead of going to a camp they decided to go to their family homes and they are refusing to go to a uh, places that we have found to cater for them. So when you come, you realize that the people are already in homes. And so it's not like the North Town that you have people at a particular place you go and then you see all of them. Unfortunately for us, the people are not ready to move into this camp. So that is why when donors come or the videos they see, they don't see a group of people together uh, uh, in the form that North Town is presenting. That may be one of the reasons why uh, most of the relief items are going to North Tongue. Okay. But I believe that we are doing our best to also bring the plight of our people to bear. Mm. And like you said, we have been on the ground. After today, definitely we we'll move to the ground and then this way because we have data on all, all the people that have been affected. Their names, their homes, their telephone numbers. And so we read them and then distribute the items to them. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Maxwell Logodor. He is the um, uh, NDC's parliamentary. parliamentary candidate for the NDC here in the South Town District. Uh, briefly, I want to engage the uh, party chair for the South uh, Town constituency to tell us how the party has been doing its own homework uh, proud to the arrival of uh, this particular relief item from the national level. So at your level here, the constituency, what have you done for your people? Thank you very much. I'm Michael Chikudo, the constituency chairman for South Town. Uh, as you are all aware, this uh, uh, spillage has uh, actually affected the three uh, Tongu districts. And uh, South Tongu is also one of them. Uh, we actually have in place uh, the constituency executives who are organizing spearheading the distribution and everything to the affected victims. These are the things we are doing. And uh, as a CEC, we are taking the supervisory role of uh, the distribution of all the items to the affected victims in the constituency. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we appreciate your time. Now, I would want uh, viewers to uh, look at the volume of relief items brought in here by the National Democratic Congress. Uh, you can see some uh, cooking oil here in your shorts. And we are told that a number of these have been brought uh, uh, for the uh, flood victims. And we also have bags of rice here, which is going to be distributed among the 11 constituencies 
that have been affected, which include the South Tongue. So the donation is actually happening here, uh, which means that all the other constituencies would have to pick up their, uh, you know, relief items from here. So it, it, this place is more like a centralized place where the donation uh, is happening. And then from here, uh, the party big wigs will be, you know, going to tour the affected areas uh, in the uh, Volta region and other parts of the region. And so some dignitaries are arriving, as you can see in your shot there. Uh, a lot of them are coming and um, we are expecting, you know, the uh, Speaker of Parliament to also appear here. A number of people are expected to be here. We want to show you the, the, the trucks that are carrying the relief items pretty soon. And then um, we will uh, run some interviews by you to, to appreciate what's really happening here. So in your shot, you see the uh, truck carrying the cooking oil. And uh, this is what is going to be distributed to the uh, affected or the flood victims here. Then we have uh, water, which is portable water in bottles. You can see that in your shot there, uh, a truck. Uh, we really don't know the number then uh, there is another truck actually uh, which has uh, bags of rice actually so the relief items in fact the rice is in two trucks as you can see from the extreme these are the trucks carrying the uh, number of bags that the national democratic congress act is actually uh, you know distributing to flood uh, victims here in the Vault region and parts in the Esujaman district of the Eastern region. And so you can see the numbers there, uh, quite a number, uh, which is supposed to uh, go to uh, about uh, 11 constituencies. So if you are watching us, we are live from um, Sogakope here in the South Tong district of the Vault region, where the National Democratic Congress is actually making a donation. I mean, to uh, flood victims across the eight uh, uh, affected, uh, you know, districts here. And so that's the occasion. And pretty soon we will be uh, having uh, the party big wigs, including the general secretary of the party, uh, Fifi Fiavi Kwete. He will be here. We are told that the party chair himself will be here. And we are told also that the... Um, a Speaker of Parliament is expected to be here, and this donation is being done on behalf of the uh, uh, presidential candidate of the National Democratic Congress. I have with me the uh, Member of Parliament for the South Tong District uh, constituency, I should say, with me here to share uh, his thoughts with us. We have been on the ground. We've spoken to a number of people, and your name kept coming up. I mean. Most of them are saying they have received some relief items from you and they are happy that you've done that now. But there's another concern from people of uh, Agbeve, Dodoekope, Jetokoi area that you have neglected them. The focus seems to be around Dabala area. Why so? I, I don't think, uh, well, well, that is, it's, it's an ongoing process. And so um, we've actually sent some items to Jetokwe area um, some three, four days ago. And so we are going to continue. Uh, I do not be for what GM is doing today. We would have been on the field by now. In fact, around Agbeve, we know the communities there that have been severely affected. Alika Kope there, Chachu Kope there, Amutinu there. All of them have been severely, in fact, they've even deserted. And so they've been displaced and that we can even count close to about 30 40 you know households that have been displaced there so it's it's not like we have not we have not we have we have we have we have we have refused to attend to them we sent to each of these communities 100 bags of uh, water already and then we are actually planning to send them some food stuff which we will be doing maybe after this event and so we have not left anyone. In fact, we can't afford to do that. And so let everybody rest assured, be rest assured that we will get to them. We will go. It's a, it's, it's, it's a caravan on the move. And, and we are getting to everybody. And so uh, what it is is that probably let me use this opportunity to appeal to the rest of the world, to the, appeal to the rest of the world that, yes, um, there will be the need for them to continue to support because, um, rightly so, uh, VRA is doing something through NADMO. 
government have we haven't seen any show yet and then uh, uh, individuals organizations so far have been so fantastic and uh, we think we can only rely on others not necessarily the central government to really help and so we have actually put together a short code where we are using uh, uh, as a means to mobilize resources and so um, I don't know whether if it's um, if I'm allowed to just mention a short code to the general public, but then that will it's uh, relief items, right? So they can do it. Why not? I mean, we want people uh, to actually benefit from this relief. I a lot of people are going through a lot. Exactly. So we have the South Town relief effort for flood victims, and then the code is um, star two zero three star zero four seven hash star two zero three star zero four seven hash and the contact persons that must be uh, contacted on this okay if somebody wants to do uh, 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 some other donations zero five zero nine one four four five three seven or zero two four eight eight six seven six nine zero. all right these people are available to receive your calls thank you all others who have gone ahead and supported variously. Thank you so much. JM himself, Ejumara. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So that was the uh, uh, Member of Parliament for the South Town constituency, Kobla Woyuma, giving us some uh, details of what they have been doing at the constituency level to support uh, flood victims here in the South Town district. I have with me um, some of the flood victims to share their story with us briefly. Uh, you are from the South Town, uh, you know, district or constituency. How have you been affected so far? Thank you very much for your concern. My name is Sifa Siyaosokpa, uh, one of the victims. Really, uh, it was a shock and a terrible situation for us when this water came to our homes. We have been devastated. Which part of the constituency do you live? South Town. I mean, which, which town? Sugakope, precisely. Yes, as I said, we are traumatized. As I speak now, anytime, anywhere I see water guarded somewhere, then I become frightened that the water is coming to me again. So we are, in fact, in the state of trauma. We are not stable at all. That is what I can say about it for now. What do you make of the relief items being brought here by the National Democratic Congress? Oh, we are most grateful to the people. It was a surprise. We were not expecting it. But now that it has come, we will continue to say, God bless who are the organizers of this program. Thank you so much. There's another victim we want to talk to briefly. How were you also affected? Yeah, my name is Akole Christian, assembly member for Agbeva Electoral Area. Yeah, my area, in fact, this problem was very bad over there because the flooding is too much. And my people are very painful about what happened in my area so if I you have been affected thank you thank you so much so uh, those are some of the few uh, you know flood victims in actual fact over 26,000 of uh, Ghanaians have been affected according to the National Disaster Management Organization for which reason the National Democratic Congress is uh, presenting some items here. Actually, we told that this is a presentation from the eighth flag bearer, uh, John Dramani Mahama, to 11 constituencies, uh, 10 in the Volta region and one in the Eastern region. And we told that very soon the program is gonna start, but I just wanna run by you. You see the traditional uh, leaders also gathered here. They are in the red, which means that um, it's uh, an emergency situation, and we'll try to see if we can get some uh, bite from them to, to, to know uh, what they make of uh, this particular uh, relief item coming from the NDC flag bearer. And so um, I hope you are doing well. Yes, please. All right, so the traditional authorities, you are very much concerned about the situation happening within your traditional areas. Now, uh, what do you make of government response so far uh, then we can talk about what the NDC is doing. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Togbe Bli, the third from Sukwe. Uh, I want to thank the government, especially the opposition, that is the NDC government, for, and then I really appreciate whatever they are doing this morning. So we are here to see what they are, they are for us. 
Now, so proud to the coming of the NDC, I mean, um, have you received uh, any relief items from central government so far, you, the people of Sokpe? Yes, uh, we, we are able to meet the vice president, that was two days today, at Sokpe, by, that is my traditional area. He, uh, she, he informed us that he will be giving us something, then he, he have given us something, uh, some money, but that money is being given to the regional, regional, that is our regional, yes, the regional chairman, or yes, that, that he will do that thing for us. But up to now, we didn't hear anything from them yet. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us here on Joy. So that's a traditional ruler here from Sokpe uh, sharing his thoughts on the relief items they have received so far here. So you can see a number of the traditional rulers across, and uh, it appears that the dignitaries are just arriving or would want to give you, uh, you know, a view of their arrival. And these are live pictures from Sogakope in the South Tong district of the Volta region. There you have it. And the dignitaries are uh, just arriving here. These are live pictures, actually. Uh, and then there you have uh, the former uh, Speaker of Parliament, Do Ajaho. He has just arrived here, and uh, he, he is uh, in the company of other dignitaries of the party currently interacting with the, um, um, the Member of Parliament for South Tong constituency as well as the General Secretary of the party, I mean the Regional Secretary James Gunu and others here. Uh, and so former Speaker of Parliament uh, Doa Jaho is here. Other dignitaries are expected to touch down soon. And so that's what you have in your picture. And so you can see the arrival of the uh, chairman of the National Democratic Congress, uh, Fifi Kwete, the general secretary, is also here. And uh, they have arrived here. And you can see the reaction from the crowd. Yeah, the general secretary, the chairman is, is, is in your shot there. Yeah, as you can see. So these are live pictures from in the Sugakope in the uh, South Town district of the Volta region. He is currently exchanging pleasantries with the traditional authorities here. So that's the chairman of the National Democratic Congress in your picture, uh, exchanging pleasantries with the traditional authorities gathered here uh, to receive the relief items from the uh, National Democratic Congress, uh, specifically from the uh, presidential candidate, we are told, of the National Democratic Congress. He's been led by the um, member of Parliament for the constituency uh, in the person of Kobla Woyome. You see um, General Mosquito there in your shorts exchanging pleasantries with the traditional authorities here. Uh, so this is a live picture from uh, Sogakope in the South Tong district of the Volta region. The occasion is that the uh, NDC is about presenting some relief items to 11 constituencies in the Volta region. Actually, 10 in the Volta region and one in the Eastern region. And uh, to uh, bring some uh, relief to flood victims across the eight districts of our country. And so you see the party here. The party is on. The NDC sympathizers are here heavily patronizing the uh, uh, relief, uh, you know, engagement. And so we believe that very soon the dignitaries will be addressing the gathering. Then we can really understand what they have to tell us. But we can confirm here that the former Speaker of Parliament uh, is here in the person of uh, Do Ajaho, he is here. The uh, chairman of the National Democratic Congress, 
uh, Johnson Asiedo in Ketia ACM. The general. My colleague Carlos Caloni there, and it's a bit of a fanfare. Of course, you must drown your sorrows uh, at some point. That is what is going on in Sogakope with the former Speaker of Parliament, together with other stalwarts of the NDC there, to make a donation. Dana Budakbi, among others, uh, featuring uh, right there. A number of the dignitaries seated here, uh, there to address the gathering pretty soon. The General Secretary is there, the Chairman is here, and also we have Kessel Atoforsen. We also have uh, the MP for um, Amako Fibua is here. Yes, yeah, so these are the, uh, the leaders of the NDC in your shorts uh, who are here to present some relief items to, uh, you know, I was going to catch a word actually with the former member of parliament for the South Tong constituency. And so we are coming to you live from the South Tong district of the Volta region. And uh, this is where the National Democratic Congress will want to present some relief items to flood victims in this region. there bringing us the latest unfortunately the connection has not exactly been the best but uh, the gathering waiting with bated breath if you like and of course some donations going to be made as far as the victims of the the Akosombo dams spillage uh, are concerned and uh, you saw there the NDC today uh, in Sogakope in full force to make those donations uh, stalwarts of the NDC have spoken. We saw also uh, the member of parliament, the, the NDC's candidate elect for South Tong, Maxwell Lukuto, together with others, interacting with Carlos uh, Caloni. We also saw in our shot uh, right there, Johnson S. Yudunketia, the chairman of the party, the general secretary, Fifi Fiavi Quete, is there, together with other stalwarts of the party. Let's try one last time if we can get the connection to Carlos one more time and then wrap it up from his end. Carlos Caloni, if you can hear me, uh, please let's take it away. Well, it appears we do not have Carlos Caloni, and we may have to uh, conclude from here as far as that conversation is uh, concerned. Of course, we also have uh, on our slate today something else that we're going to be looking at. That demonstration in Kasua on the back of bad roads leading to quite a lot of traffic. That conversation still to come together with other conversations with uh, sponsors of the National Science and Math Quiz, Academic City, among others. But before we take that breather, let, let's celebrate a few people this morning. And this comes through a hearty message to a wife. My dearest Sarah Nana Ekuya Ajari, you are truly incomparable and the absolute best partner to me. You are a gem, a precious creation of God meant solely for me. I am endlessly grateful that you have chosen to share your life with me and our children. On this special day, I wish you a happy, happy birthday filled with immense joy and indescribable happiness, my beloved queen. With loads of love and adoration from Emmanuel Ajari, Nana Akosia, Papa Kwejo, and the entire family. So that's a bit of a lengthy one. Of course, he's celebrating his wife. Then this one says, Happy birthday to Paulina Nate, aka Funky Grandma. And uh, God richly bless you on this beautiful and special day of yours. We love you so much. It's from Kushi, Zoe, Liam, and Ludvish. And it's from Na. Ajili. We celebrate both of you, Funky Grandma, and of course, Madam Ajari as well. We'll take a bit of a breather and return with more on the AM Show. Do stay.
Hello there, very good morning to you. It's a bright sunny day here in Accra, but I know for some of you in other parts of the country, you're dealing with floods and the impact on your livelihoods. We will be staying on that particular story. Um, Carlos Caloni is still on the ground for us, and so expect more on that in our subsequent bulletins. But it's now time to talk about the Enum Presbyterian Senior High School. It is 125 years old. That is a really, really, really long time to be in existence. This morning, I've been joined by Sarah Inkum. She's assistant head, domestic, in Umpress BSHS, and Rutherford Alex Amoyao. He's an old student and a board member of Umpress BSHS. Good morning to you, ma'am and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you here. Good morning. 125 years. Wow. Yeah. That is a really, really long time. I know, I, I know about some of the schools in the central region that are as old, but not really head of a new Presbyterian um, senior high school. So, ma'am, do you mind telling us when the school was established and how it came about? All right, thank you. Well, I'll use this opportunity to greet uh, our moderator, Presbyterian Church of Ghana, and our clergy, our board chair, Dr. Vladimir Tridansu and then the headmaster, staff, and the entire community. Good. Um, the school was established uh, as a, like the missionary schools. You know, they came propagating the gospel. So they got to Enum in 1864. And as they got there, they needed people who could read and write. So they started primary school, 1866. So Enum senior school as we're talking about was established came in existence in 1897 1897 and it started with a seven students and it grew gradually boys and girls at a point they had boys school girls boarding school then it also in 1963 uh, came to became the training college system okay. also so we have those who went to that place as uh, they trained as teachers and then we had the normal secondary school uh -huh, up till now right yeah and now you have the the, the normal SHS, shs and you have boys and girls we as have well boys and girls in fact from seven membership we now currently as we talk our number is 2810 wow yeah that's a huge number yeah Oh, very interesting. Uh, so I know that schools we would usually like to talk about the people who've come through the school, the people they've churned out. Uh, I know Alex is an old student. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but do you mind sharing with us some of the people who uh, the school uh, boasts of us uh, <laughs> having churned out? 125 years. That's a long Taking time. from boys, girls, <laughs> training college, grandfathers and mothers. <laughs> We, 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 in fact, if we, we, we want to mention, we wouldn't live here today. Um, a lot. We have uh, currently, they are living and non-living, mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, is one. The first uh, doctor, Ghanaian doctor practitioner, where is, is from there, Dr. Okuampofo. A lot, mm. a lot. We have Nana Seuphoria Talit Ochehene, Otunfu Pukuwari the second, later Santehene. Eh, now our MP, Thomas Ampimyakun, Mr. Kwame Edu, immediate past SU general director. A lot, a lot. This is, this is a school that has, <laughs> that has a, a lot of... Um, Prominent people, it, it has turned out. So, for those of you who are planning to go to high school, you should think about Enum Presbyterian if you haven't heard of it. Um, it's a school that you should consider. But um, let me come to you, Ruth Afford. You are an old student. What was your time in school like? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> was, was, she, was she headmistress at the time? No. no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I will right. take this opportunity to send my regards to the Omaihene of Enum traditional mm. area. Okusia uh, Kobrimpon Komisa Sraku, who was just coronated last weekend, and the community at large, not forgetting the board and the old students who are represented here this morning. Um, 
during our time, in fact, the whole school were not even up to 300. Mm. And now they are talking about 3,000. Mm. So we knew each student. You meet someone who is even in Form 1 when you are in third year and you know the person. But for now, even in the same form, you it's wouldn't difficult. know. So the school has student. grown so much. Yes. And even as a, student, a teacher, you wouldn't know someone who is in Form 1 when you are taking Form 3 students. Mm. So the school has uh, improved a lot. What, what one thing would you say your school gave you that has helped you in life to this point? Thank you so much. When you come to discipline, uh, and sec is second to none. Because uh, we can mention most of our people through this training that the Presbyterian discipline they went through in ANSEC has gotten them into a higher position. Mm. We can't forget to mention Brigadier General Frank Tay, who is with the Ghana Army. Mm -hmm. We can't forget Reverend Commodore Ejejan, mm -hmm. Colonel Bobby, Professor um, uh, Joseph Osafo who is with Legon, mm -hmm. Professor Samuel Opon, who is at Kolibu, Dr. Um, Samuel Bada, who is in the U.S., and others. There are so many that we can't uh, mention. Even the immediate past uh, CEO for National Lotteries, Honorable Kofi Ose Amea, were all people who passed through a new presidency senior high school. So it is the discipline mm. that the school has impacted on that. Right, so we're talking about an anniversary for 125 years. I can imagine this is going to be big and huge. Sure. Ma'am, do you mind telling us what the program outline is going to look like? Um, the program outline, yeah. <laughs> it's, like we are saying, it's going to be so huge. And so um, we'll have a week-long program from Sunday, that is on the 22nd, to then we, we, the grand one will be on the 28th of October. So we have activities lined up for the week where would, uh, a whole lot of things will take place. But I don't know whether you want us to go through the yeah, the, the highlights, yes, the, 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 pro highlights. The, the programs you would want the old students to come to so that they can hear right here on, on Joy News. Um, because it's a week longer, I don't know whether most of them who are from far, those within the vicinity, for them they are join, joining us on all the things that we're going to. But there will definitely be a Grand Derba, right? Yes, the Grand okay. Derba. So that is where we will be having a... Um, Honorables coming. We have His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia coming. We have the regional minister. We have the chiefs and all that. So they will be coming. And a, a program of such normally with addresses and speeches. Mm. So uh, coupled with performance by students. Mm. You know, so that it will be that grand as we right. So Larry, your old uh, why am I calling you Larry? <laughs> Rutherford, <laughs> Rutherford, <laughs> Alex Almoyal. Your old students are watching. I'm sure you're doing a project, right? Because usually you do legacy projects. Yeah. I mean, what does the school need? I just want you to talk to the old students. Um, tell them why they should be a part of this anniversary and what you're contributing to your school as part of it. All right, thank you. Uh, for the old students, we've started uh, supporting the school. And um, when the school administration planned of this program, they invited us, we sat with them, when we, we, we saw that there was the need to paint the school, give it some uplift. Okay. So we went in and we supported in painting the whole school. Mm. And uh, we, we've given them some furniture and others. We are still on it. So there are more to be done. So we want all old students to come on board mm -hmm. so that we help the administration put the school in a good shape so that whoever goes through the school also experience the discipline and the training that we all had during our time. Fantastic. So if you're watching us and you're an old student of Enum Presbyterian, and this is the time your school is calling you back home, mm -hmm. there's a grand anniversary, and you must be a part of it. 125 years is a long time, whether you're old, young, if you completed last year, um, well, I'm not sure 100 years ago we'll still be alive, but maybe 40, 30 years ago, your school is calling you back home. But let me say a thank you to you. Would you like to sing your anthem before you go, just to wrap, wrap us up? Uh, um, oh. our, our motto is service and sacrifice. Okay. So anybody who passes through the school mm. will give out uh, so much to society. Right. Uh, 
Upon the mountain, okay. I am pitched. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can't remember your story. Okay. 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 Go. Upon the mountain, I, I am pitched among the lovely hills. I see the mighty Volta pass among the lovely hills. If asked my name, if asked my name, I'll proudly say, I'll proudly say, Ansek, Ansek, tranquil Ansek, tis enum senior school. If asked my name, if asked my name, I'll proudly say, I'll proudly say, Ansek, Ansek, tranquil Ansek, tis enum senior school. You are presbyterian. Upon the mountain, we are perched to be seen. You are indeed a Presbyterian school. And that's my conversation with Sarah and Kuma, assistant head, domestic and new press BSHS. And Rutherford Alex Amoya, old student board member in Noon Presby SHS. Ma'am, are you an old student as well? Okay, all right. Because <laughs> of the way you were singing the anthem, I just had to ask. Well, that'll be my conversation with them. Do stay here on the AM show. We've got a lot more for you. Hello there, thank you so much for staying on the AM show. We're still talking things education. And this morning I'm speaking to Family Health Medical School. They are one of our sponsors for the NSMQ. Um, hello. Yes. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Yes, please. I'm a Nuveva yes. class of 2023. Um, so you just entered? Yes. Okay. Um, I just completed medical school in okay. September. So okay. Oh, so you um, just completed. So you are part of the graduating class of 2023. Exactly. Yes. But you entered as someone who was already doing biochemistry or yes. uh, as a biochemical engineer. Oh. No. So I had a bachelor's degree in biochemistry, cell okay. and molecular biology. Okay. So that's what I used to enter the graduate entry medical program. Oh, that's a GEM. Yes, please. Okay. GEM. All right. So, Yes, please. That's nice. And I've also got Dr. Susie Anku, who is now a doctor with the Weja Bawe Municipal Hospital. But she was a nursing officer before she entered Family Health Medical School. Yes. Now, let's talk about Family Health Medical School. Right. Um, uh, traditionally, you know, if you wanted to be a medical student in Ghana, either go to Lagos, or you go to Kent University, or you go to, um, um, what's it called, um, University of Cape Coast. Yeah. But Family Health opened you know the private sector to mm -hmm. all the opportunities that are there but let me just find out from you what convinced you let me start with you daniel to yes. enroll with family health okay um with family health i've always known that i wanted to do medicine so after my first degree looking at the options that i had uh, some family and friends i had in the industry suggested family health they had the founder it's a pillar in the medical field in ghana and they have some of the best teachers available and so it wasn't a difficult choice for me to make All right. to choose family health. What about you Doc Anku? Okay so um, like my colleague rightly said um, it's true that medical education has been extended to the public universities but thanks be to family health we are breaking that status quo mm -hmm. because we have a lot of um, young men and women who have the passion and the dream to become medical doctors of which the public um, universities could not absorb all of them I am a perfect example, like I've been saying, I, when I had a dream of pursuing medicine, I wrote um, the GEMP exam in Legon, of which I passed. Almost over 200 students applied, and then I passed that exam, a very tedious one, passed through the interview, but um, I wasn't picked for the, um, the program. Before the program. And I was devastated, and that was at the point that family health was introduced. And I entered family health and I realized that I had brilliant men and women who have passed their exams about three times, have gone to interview three times, two times, and didn't have the opportunity. So this, it's also a thing about a lack of space, and yes. so family health yes. brings in that dimension yeah. which yeah. allows you to. Yeah. Right, so yeah. tell me about your experience at family health. We've been seeing the videos, we've seen the 
the quality of your <laughs> your 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 lecture halls and yeah. theaters. But um, what 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 was your experience like at Family Health? Well, um, like any experience, it had its good and bad sides. But I'm glad to say more good sides. Um, we have the infrastructure, so learning wasn't so difficult. But the medical course itself, as we know, is quite tough. Yeah, as for the medical course, that <laughs> one day, I think it's an established, established. Uh, <laughs> truth that exactly. it's not an easy road to travel. Yes, yeah. yes. And so fortunately, um, I was even given the opportunity to lead, so I got some leadership skills and, and other things like that. Um, lecturers were always ready to help us. Um, administration was also ready to help us. So uh, all in all, I would, th I would say it's a very good experience that I had in family. What about you, Doc? A very great and awesome one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a very good and awesome Why? Because um, starting from the learning environment, our school environment is very serene, situated on a river, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the learning materials, very resourced libraries. For the lecturers, they are top notch. All our clinical coordinators across the major hospitals in the country are very well resourced persons that give us the quality training that we deserve. And that for me makes the experience great. But you said you had always wanted to be a doctor, mm -hmm. but you became a nurse. Okay. Wasn't that, wasn't that enough for you? No, it wasn't. Mm. Okay. It wasn't because um, I started as a diploma nurse. Okay. Okay. And then um, with a whole nurses training, did a few rotations in the north, and I had opportunities to start working at the Ridge Hospital. So I started working with the HIV department. As, um, at that time, I was the only nursing person in addition to a very high-ranked um, um, nursing DDNS that was working there. And I realized that I was taking care of the patients. Having doctors to come to see the patients were very difficult at the time. We can send patients to the OPD at 5 p.m. They have not been seen. And we, we were like practically doing everything, so I realized that if I'm practically doing everything for this patient to bridge that gap of patient doctor gap, I can do more mm. but going for a higher education. So that was what motivated me to push further. Right. And I can see that you'd want to go more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you did biochemistry and cell molecular biology. It's quite a mouthful. Yes. Um, again, I mean, by medicine. Is it, is it just because it had always been a childhood passion? Or you also didn't feel satisfied with your undergrad studies? Yes. Um, so uh, I had the opportunity to do some internships in the medical field while I was doing my first degree. And I realized the job satisfaction was there when you directly affect patients, yeah. interact with them, yeah. see their progress, help solve their problems. Unfortunately for me, the biochemistry course I did gave me the foundation that would help me pursue medicine. So. It was a push for me, and the biggest push for me was a job satisfaction, of course. And so, so I mean, I'm just going to put you on the spot, right? Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, if you had the opportunity to do medicine straight away, and to do what you did, or take the path you took to become doctor, so you're not, you've not yet graduated, right? So mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I can't call you a doctor. <laughs> okay. So to become a doctor yeah. and a future doctor, yeah. which one would you choose and why? Hmm. <laughs> okay, to, to start with, um, the path I have chosen or the path that I have treaded upon now um, gave me a better perspective. Right. Yes, because it has exposed me to the health environment. It has given me a broader perspective of what things happen in the hospital. Mm. I gathered a few experiences as a nurse. So shifting that to the med medical field, Rather gave me a lot of advantage and make me a more better person. So you take this path again? Yes, I'll take this path. What about you, yes. Daniel? Um, I agree with Dr. Anko on this. Um, it is very true. The going the long way might seem like you're losing something, but it actually gives you an advantage. It gives you an edge because when you're practicing, you have a basic knowledge of the basics that go into medicine. And you get into medical school in a more mature way, and so it advises your character and then mm. your attitude towards yeah. patients because yeah. you have a better understanding of right. the repercussions of your management of the yeah. So you, the two of you entered as GEMP students, yes. which is the Graduate Entry Medical, medical Program. program. Yes. But does the school offer 
direct entry for people who've just finished senior yes. high school, for example? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Because I just need to establish that so that if someone yes. is watching us, they know that they yes. don't necessarily have to do have no. an undergrad in anything yeah. first. So if you're watching us and you're interested in becoming a medical doctor, you've seen it for yourself. I mean, the pictures speak for themselves. You've seen what Family Health has to offer. But I mean, the final words that you have, a minute each, right? So to parents, to guardians, to applicants, you take that Dr. Anku and then you have a congregation coming up. Yes. And so just let us know more about this in a minute. So let me start with you, Doc. Okay. So we want to urge all um, parents and an applicant that irrespective of whether if you're coming in straight, you are good to go. And then we want to also applicants who are colleagues like us who have uh, first degrees in the health sciences and have the same passion and dream. Family Health is there for you to champion the GAM program and you are good to go. Great. Yes. In addition to everything Dr. Anko has said, uh, we are having our congregation on the 9th of November, I believe, at 8.30 a.m. So the public is welcome to join us and then come and see the product of Family Health Medicine. All right. Congratulations in Thank advance you to you. Much. Do you have any other things to announce at the yes. website? We just published the numbers, but if you want to go over the website okay. again, just yes. let us know. So the website is www.fhu. Dot edu dot gh. FHU, Family Health University. Yes, dot edu dot, dot g g yes. gh. Right. So just visit the website. You can call the numbers on your screen. And as we continue with the NSMQ, you will see the numbers because they are one of our sponsors. They allow us to bring you the live coverage of the National Science and Mass Business. Your school still in the competition? By <laughs> supporting the great ones. Who are the great ones? Oh, God is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but which school did you go to? I went to a private school, oh, a nation school. Okay, so yeah. yeah. My school is at Wally Secondary School. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. You just heard Dr. Susie Anku, she's at the class of 2021 uh, from the Family Health Medical School and Daniel Aminu is with the class of 2023 and he will be graduating later this year. They've just been telling you why you should choose the Family Health Medical School. Do stay for more. We are still talking about uh, education, and this time I've been joined by Nelly Ajaman Jemfi, who is Director of Marketing and Communication Academic City. Hello, how are you? Thank you. I'm very fine. I'm right. Very I'm fine. doing well. Today, I'm, I'm excited because you're doing a lot about education, but tell us about Academic City University College. You're five years? Yes, oh, we are. Congrats. We actually just turned five this year. Um, so we are a higher education institution uh, located at Hacho. We offer a broad range of courses in science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics. Um, I think one of the things that we pride ourselves on is redefining learning in higher education. Um, and we believe that we've been somewhat successful in that. Um, we were recently named 15th in Sub-Saharan Africa, oh, and second in Ghana in the five years. higher education. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that one of the things that we attribute it to is um, our student projects, uh, which fall under impact in Africa. We actually have a low cost ventilator currently undergoing trials at Kolobu. So, oh, yeah. wow. Congrats. Thank That's you. impressive. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen photos of your campus. I'm yet to visit the place, but I love the scenery. It's Goodness. beautiful. You should come. Goodness. I'm actually holding you to this. You should come. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there are a lot of young people watching us. And once again, let me say thank you for sponsoring the National Science and Maths yeah, Quiz. Um, but there are a lot of young people watching us who have choices to make. Why should they choose Academic City University College? Um, so one of the things that we do is we say we educate future-ready leaders, right? Um, as we think about the way the world has evolved, you know, if you, what we are now, five years ago, people could not even envision. And so one of the things that we do is equip students with the skills to be able to face whatever the world may look like, especially with advances in technology. We are talking about AI. I know when ChatGPT came out, everybody went into an uproar. What does the world look like now with all of these advances? We don't know. But we can equip you with the skills so that no matter what you meet, you are able to succeed there. So if that's something that you know, interests you, then we are where you need to be. What are some of the courses you um, so let me make sure that I get this right. Um, so we have four distinct faculties, uh, 
business um, under which we have marketing, entrepreneurship, banking and finance, HR. We have the Faculty of Informatics, where we have information technology, computer science, artificial intelligence. We're actually the first uh, university in Africa to offer an undergrad degree in artificial intelligence. Uh, then, of course, we have engineering, which we probably are more, <laughs> more well known for. So there we have robotics, biomedical engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, computer engineering, mechanical engineering, <laughs> industrial and systems engineering, electronics and communication engineering. We also have a communication arts faculty where we have journalism and mass comm, PR and advertising. We also have pre-engineering uh, courses for art students who want to move into engineering as well as, um, you know. That is fantastic. Yes, um, people who are missing elective math and then of course English as a second language because we have many students from all over the continent. At our do you university. only do undergrad courses for Current, now? Yes, for now, but we're looking to roll out graduate courses pretty soon, so please watch the space. All right, we'll <laughs> definitely watch the space. So how do we stay in touch with Academic City, your socials, you know, just for um, notifications and stuff like this? Yes, um, so you can reach us at 053-102-0810. Or on our website act at dot edu dot g. Can you please go over the number again? Uh, 053 102 0810. And I like that you're very practical because yeah. what we are seeing, we are seeing people who are doing hands on learning, yes, and that has been a huge gap in our education system. Yes. And, and that's why there have even been recently conversations about TVET and going yes. more practical. So thank you, Academic CT, uh, for helping us bring the NSMQ to our viewers <laughs> and also for offering this right here in Ghana. You don't have to go anywhere. You can get the quality education right here exactly. in Ghana. So, um, is your, no, your, no, sorry. Is your school still in the competition? Um, so I went to SOSAGIC. I don't think we've been oh, in the competition. Okay, yeah. no, no, no. okay <laughs> no. all right. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. But... Which school? I, mean, I don't want to put you on this. Which school am I supporting? I mean, uh, I guess Achimota. My my grandfather went there, so I forget that's the next. That's thing. where your heart <laughs> yeah. is, right? That's a, so we'll see how it goes with Achimota. And um, uh, I can perfectly understand why Academic City will want to sponsor the NSMQ. I know that there was a time when there was a certain package for some of the students who were interested in engineering from the competition and yes. what your school was offering, is that still available? Yes, um, that's a presidential scholarship uh, valued at 40,000 USD, uh, covers tuition, laptop, meals, transportation to and for, from home for the four years also, um, as well as a little stipend to support the students during their studies. So please, if you're watching as the students who are competing in the NSMQ, there's a lot up for grabs. Academic City has a wonderful offer for you. But beyond those in the competition, do you offer scholarships? Yes. Um, so the presidential scholarships are open more widely. We do sort of dedicate one to NSMQ, but uh, we offer a number of them um, throughout every cycle. So just look for Academic City, visit the school, speak to them, just let them tell you what they have on offer for you. Uh, but that'll be a show today. It's been heavy on education and you can understand why. Uh, but that was Nelly Adjuman Jane Fee. She's Director of Marketing and Communication at Academic City University College. I am Bernice Abubedu Lanz and I've been doing this with Benjamin Akapo. Do stay with us here on the Joy News Channel. We are your most Incredible news source. Up next is News Desk with Aisha Ibrahim. Thanks for staying.